This is quite the like crinoid sort of area. It really is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, crinoid garden. Yes, the crinoid garden. And is that a a whip right there? Oh, Looks like it. Yeah. Yep. Mary, are you getting happy? I don't know if it's a bamboo yet. <laughs> oh, are we gonna <laughs> keep an eye out on um for rocks for Coralie as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like uh, before we get into carbonates was what Megan was telling me. Yep, that's so. right. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as, they, as we climb up Go the for reef, zoom? as we climb up the reef, it will become more and more carbonate based. Okay. okay. Uh, as we get. Shorter. As opposed to like these are organic. basalts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a node Hold there. Hold that so this zoom might there, be a bamboo. and I think I can get it to. Oh yeah. Just sort of. Yeah, these have some nodes. Yep. Um, I mean, without the branching, it's kind of hard to tell. It's got these it interesting fine. little branches. Little branches. Where do you like, see that? I just see like little areas where there's a lot of polyps. Maybe it's just yeah. an area where it was disrupted. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, like it had like a parasite or something. Yeah. Do we have time Parti to sample? Partied it upon. Do you, yeah. Yeah. Do you want one? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, can we actually get a snip of that? Yes, we can. Uh, can you stop the ship? Oh, oh it's already we stopped. We're stopped. so ready for this. <laughs> awesome. Nice. So, um, what do you think? A snip and a slurp, or what? What would be good for getting a little piece of this? I think so. Great. Seems reasonable. Gabby, can you talk us through the slip and slurp? Snip and slurp. <laughs> slurp. <laughs> it's actually, it's just as delightful as it sounds. <laughs> it sounds pretty delightful. So, uh, Kylie's going to use the coral cutters to snip off, what, 10 centimeters? Yeah, roughly. Um, and then we're going to turn on the suction, and she's just going to hold the snippet of coral in front of the suction until she starts to see it they like go into the suction hose, and then um, it's just going to go right in. Raj. Just like that. <laughs> Hopefully just that easily. Yeah, it's usually pretty good. It gets a little tricky with the, there's like bigger critters. It's really good for floaty stuff. Um, like black corals are very like neutrally buoyant and are just miserable to get into a box. Um, and that's that's something it's really good for. Uh, pilots, it does look like the wind's kicking up a bit, just okay, thanks. for your awareness. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll let this settle out. I'm going to flush the slurp. Roger. Um, and, and we do have a sample in slurp chamber one. Roger that. Thank you. Um, we've also got about a 10 degree heading change coming in from the bridge. Great, thank you. I think we've got a really nice Argus position right now. It should be able to deal with some changes. Roger. Um, okay, so okay. you remember the order of operations for turning this on? Blue button, then craft valve. Yes. Raj. Um, oh yeah, and also craft power because yeah. of the ground. Uh, sorry, what was that? There is a sample in. Uh, yes, it is not uh, giving us anything. Oh, I can't sure. hear that person. Tim is not, and that is not a stupid question, actually. <laughs> no problem, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So craft power is on. Craft power is on. Um, and then when, when you hit the blue button, I'll hit the craft valve. Roger. OK, jaws closed, blue button coming on. OK. On. Good. I hit it, no light. OK. It, will it light? There's, oh. Oh, kill it. <laughs> yep, I gotcha. Raj. It did not give me a light. Yep, that's it. We don't have an arm for now. Raj. Sorry. 
あっ、um, yeah sure is okay so we're still having trouble with troubles with the arm gotcha. so I think this goes to uh, maybe chief Sai or watch lead to decide whether this dive is something we want to proceed with if we have no sampling capability okay um, so uh, I will I will confer with chief Sai and let you know maybe we can get another nice zoom on this meanwhile okay sounds good we will zoom absolutely we, that is one thing we can do <laughs> okay go for zoom how much is the um no never mind i'm not gonna i'll do it <laughs> off spl <laughs> for those of you who are joining on idolist live we all yeah, work it doesn't a um, four hour watch shift once in the morning and once in the evening so for this crew, which is all non-male, we have a 12 noon to 4 p.m. and we have a 12 midnight to 4 a.m. shift. Some of the goals for this expedition is to characterize geological and biological aspects of the seafloor, which would include some volcanic rocks as well as deep sea corals so please stay tuned and hold tight for your questions data oh yeah Data, do you have the zoom you need here? Yes, thank you. Okay, go wide video. Looks so like we have a black coral over there in the top left corner. I see it. Okay, we'll go there. Mary, as we look over there, you want to tell the audience a little bit of what you're hoping to find? Yeah, so I am a master's student right now and my project is focusing on these What's uh, bamboo corals that I consider having a s okay. kind of odd branching pattern, and right now we're calling it a sparse brancher. Mm -hmm. So we think it kind of starts off as a whip like we just saw there, and at some point in its life kind of some type of growth trigger happens to make it start branching all of a sudden, but if you look at some of them it just looks like this odd thing that happened on one coral because it will only have like one or maybe two branches and so we're investigating that but then also investigating some other uh, bamboo corals that have similar features that might be a lot more branched. Go for zoom video. And so kind of interested in collecting some bamboo corals. Usually I want ones with some type of branching but even unbranched ones could um, still tell me something. That is. Hey, what's up? Someone is saying that this is in alternate pathies. Alternate pathies. Alternata. Okay, sounds good. Ooh, can we, before we move, take a zoom on the uh, Victor Gorgia that is right underneath Argus now? Right underneath Argus? I mean, not Argus. Uh, Hercus. Uh, Hercus. Oh, sorry. okay. It's, that's oh, right. it's on screen yeah. now. Kind of on the ledge. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, go for Zoom. A question in the feed is, how old can deep sea corals get? Do we have an answer for that? Ooh, I actually don't know. I read some there were that they can be, that we've found some that are 5,000 years old. Wow. Oh my. But beyond that, I know actually why? do not know. Our scientist ashore, Jeremy Horwitz, says that black corals can live over 4,000 years. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do we know how long they can live? Or do no, we not know this time. How long we've seen them? Yeah, yeah. Live. Uh, they were not having uh, issues with the shoulder jumping. Go for zoom. Look how pretty the purple is. That's very nice. This makes these one of my favorite corals because of that color. <laughs> what is it I, called again? I think it's a Victorgia. Yeah. Um, but also that being said, I say that about a lot of corals, them being my favorite. <laughs> yeah. But they're that beautiful. Data, how do you feel about this? Color. Do you have something? Yep. We got some good captures. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Go I. So we're sort of limited to this sort of watch circle for no, we're we're good to go. We can actually uh, make a move. Yeah, we can make a move as long as Argus is uh, yeah. is ready to go. Okay, we're good. we can wait for uh, for Kylie to finish troubleshooting her what she's working on. So, Gabby, I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, if we were to see a rock of interest that was loose, how do you think? How possible would it be to try getting it with the port arm? You could definitely try. Another thing we can do is like if you see something in the water column. We can do we can do suction with just flying the vehicle into something. Okay. So yeah, the sampling capabilities that we still have, we might be able to pick up a rock. It could be challenging. That jaw is not very big. Yeah. Um, but we could try it. Um, so, and then we'd have to stick it on the porch, which, you know, um, we're we're up for trying. Okay. Um, definitely willing to try, and definitely willing to try flying suction samples as well. Okay, and with the jaw not being very big, the rock would need to be less than 10 centimeters, I believe. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that's um, good But to it's know. worth, you know, if you see something you want, it's worth trying. I have never tried to get a sample with the arm, with the port arm before. I've uh, mainly used it for just like holding on to things that like are subsea. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's all we got, so it's worth trying. Okay, cool. Well, then we can keep our eyes peeled. I'm not sure if um, I was just seeing some rocks over there. So you're probably only going to get they one don't. rock. Um, I'm not sure about... I'd have to actually check with some of the other people about using the port arm to put things in a bio box. Gotcha. Um, so... As of right now, I would say probably only one rock. Uh, okay. um, but I can ask them when we next get a chance whether whether the port arm is appropriate to put things in the bio box with. Um, okay. Well, let's yeah, please. Let's um, let's just keep our eyes eyes peeled for less than ten centimeter loose rocks and um, sure thing. We can we can give it a try if it makes sense. These ones all look like they're attached. Yeah. Now that I'm seeing it. I've been wondering about these big stalked crinoids here. They're like very, I don't know, the branches are much longer yeah. than some of the others I've um, seen. Steve put in the chat earlier that, all right, this is a name I might butcher, uh, Gilocrinus? Gilocrinus? It was in the chat much earlier. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, but for these particular crinoids? Yes. Okay. For cool. these long stalked. Like about five oh, arms. Oh yeah, the long five arm brown star crinoids. Okay, so I'm out in front. I'm on the right heading. Argus is on the right heading. Shall Let's we? move. All right. Great. Bridge now. So so many crinoids. <laughs> Could we step two zero meters bearing one four zero?
Is that a sea pen down there in the middle of the sediment? Kind of looks oh, like yeah. it, eh? Looks so. And maybe a sea urchin or holothurian that's off in the far right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does look like it. Yeah, but you're quiet. Go for zoom. Uh, I mean, it's going to be about this. We're a, we're going to level out a little, but this in general is going to be just like a very steep dive. Wow, those shadows were kind of confusing me. For yeah, a it makes it look branched, but yeah. Do you guys have what you need there? Looks like there might be a few other sort of whips or something. Yeah, I got uh, some images of that. Okay. Nice. We are still exploring Kingman Reef. Go for zoom. Exploring the steep walls. Oh, those the weren't what I thought they were. As well. So we are not aboarding. Okay, we are go still exploring. Hey, Nia, when you get a, a moment, can, can we get a zoom out on the high pack and just take a little overview of where we're going? Yeah, roger that. Seems like as good a time as any here. Uh, so we are currently climbing up Go a for zoom. flank of Kingman Reef. Uh, you can see the ship and the vehicles right here. And see if I can zoom out a little bit more. I think another Gilacrinus. Mm -hmm. Looks like it. So here is the top of the reef uh, down at the edge of High Pack. Um, and these okay. are our waypoints here. So we're going to climb up this, this ridge line. Um, and we're going to get get right up in here. Uh, into the sh into the shoal reef area, which will be pretty exciting. Uh, right now, we're still down at, at the deepest extents, um, and it's going to be pretty steep the whole way up. It's going to be pretty much like this. So, you know, slopey terrain. We're going to climb up through these lovely basalts. Can and we look at get into some um, over to uh, the right structures? Towards it the top. almost looks like so a loose rock, but it might be, be a holothurian. It's kind of off screen now. Okay, I see it. Um, Did you mm -hmm. have any uh, question signs? Uh, no, that looks great. Thank you for the overview. Yeah, mm -hmm. Roger. Nav, can I get a quick Doppler reset? Or switching? Yeah, I would say Doppler reset. Doppler reset? Yeah. All right. It's looking like it's tracking beautifully. And um, Can we hold position for a second? I want to get a good point cloud under the vehicle here. Yeah. Nia, do you mind right doing there. another quick recap of the uh, overview? Um, some viewers would like to see the map on channel three. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. Give me just a second. I'm going to I am out of autos. All right. Roger. Thank you. All right. Resetting. OK. Thank you so much. Yeah, no worries. The purple coral was called Victor Gorgia. Yep. <laughs> yes. That's right. Okay, so now that we have high back up and uh, and going out here, I will talk a little bit more about what we're gonna do. So you can see right here. 
that's the ship in the vehicles. Um, and we are heading towards waypoint two from waypoint one, uh, which is we, we started at a depth of 1,430 meters and we're coming up the slope to 1,147 for waypoint two. Ooh. You know, looks kind of an enemy-ish. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing, high back? <laughs> hmm. Um. So here's waypoint two. For context, and we're gonna climb up this this uh, ridge flank feature of the reef, uh, and we're gonna go. Ah, and there's a coral off to the left. Quite sure here. Let I me think zoom it's all the yellow. Way out so we can see and then the a bunch more sea pens. So because we're going up the slope, that's why we're putting the status as ascending. Yes, so we are currently ascending up this ridge line up to the shoal of the reef. Uh, and we the shallowest point that we have in here is 34 and a half meters, so that's quite sure that'll be a really different environment than we're in right now. Um, oh, look off to the right. Can we, um, yeah, that looks like carbonate. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That means we are in the carbonate zone. But it's interesting we see a little bit behind that some basalt. Yeah. Nice. Okay. What so depth are we? We're um, 1300 or so? We are, 13, yeah, 13. Let, me, let me zoom back in on the contours, I can give you a better idea. Uh, I think we're pretty close to 12 50, maybe a little like 1220-ish. We're going by the contours here in high pack. Oh, okay. Go for zoom. The audience says, thanks for the map. Much appreciated, Nia. And Ryan. Great. Hmm. Well, according to the contours, we should be around 1,200 meters, uh, but also the depth that I have for this waypoint, waypoint two compared to waypoint one with all of that slope in between suggests that there might be a little bit of a discrepancy there, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. I see what you mean. Is that a... <laughs> Yeah, I do. Down here. A little cup coral down there. Yeah. A little critter. Uh, cup coral. It was. It's down off below the screen. It? Yeah, down below to the left. Okay. Keep little, your zoom. Though. I'll see if I can get down there really. It's a little delicately. hidden by one of the gotcha. crinoid arms. There it is. Uh, you're looking in the lower left? Yes. yes. Right there. Oh, there's oh, another there's one off yep. to the right, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, I see. So these are, uh, normally we do 10 meter, 50 meter contours, and these are 5 meter, 25 meter contours. Ah, OK. So I will uh, count accordingly from here on out. OK. And Asako is asking if we have seen Coralomorph a few minutes ago. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, you can push in maybe a little more. I'm all get... the way in. Oh, excellent. Okay, I just drifted off then. Go wide. Do you guys have what you need of those cup corals, or do you want more and closer? Oh, we're good. We're good. Yeah, Kay. thanks. Um... Guess I'll get straightened out so we can keep moving. Great. Wow, look at all this carbonate.
What's the uh, most effective way to tell the difference between a carbonate and a basalt? Um, I think color is a great indicator. Um, and also the texture and how friable the material is. But that being said, a lot of these basalts are quite crumbly because they're quite weathered. Mm. But basalts are usually dark um, and um, volcanic, so we're, we're seeing them in pillow lobes or pillow tubes or kind of these sheet flows. Um, and, and in this area, a lot of them have this botryoidal texture from the ferromanganese uh, crust that we're seeing on them. But carbonates are looking more like consolidated, um, looks a bit like consolidated sediment. But yeah, Amber, right. do you want to add anything? I've got just a little interruption. If we could go pan back over to the right a bit on what looked like the sea anemone that was just in the sand, Asako would like to zoom on it if possible. She says that is quite possibly Coralimorph. Oh, great. I didn't see it. So I think can it's you still me? further over to the right. Okay. I think we might have drifted down a little bit as well, but I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, looking in Argus, was it, I think it was kind of down to the right, um, there's oh. some carbonate. Yeah. Video, can you go wide and just give us a little bit less, a little bit more search area? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, my apologies, pilots. I'm not quite sure where it is now. Okay, <laughs> I, I actually have drifted off a little bit of our path here, so I'm just going to retrace where we were. Okay. okay. We've, we've got time. Sounds good. And these are going to be our samples for this trip, so. <laughs> Great. Can you put it louder? I don't know how to, how do I put the table louder? I can do this, I can do this. No, I cannot. This an enemy? Um, is that I think so. Maybe, that, that wasn't the one that I had seen before, but if we could zoom on that, yeah. that would still be good. Yeah, we can check that one out, but. Okay, go for Zoom video. And is that a holothurian or a sponge next to it? It's hard to like tell. Sponge. Oh, wait, never it mind. It looks like a holothurian the way it's on the ground. Yeah. Sitting there. And uh, was that a plexarid and a zoranthin on the right of it, Mary? Uh, I can't see yellow. right now. So. Uh, it's off the screen it's right, right here. now. Um, probably, it yeah, it might be a flexoid. Is it this way? Okay, try for a zoom. There we go. Nice. You got it, Data? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, go wide. Now there are some other creatures that you guys were talking about. We're just fine with that yellow coral. Okay, right here. Let's get a zoom on that. Nice. Our scientist ashore said that that was a different. Oh, who's this? Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Let's get a is zoom that on that a creature. Ray? What creature is that? Um, just out just of you, out of it's up right there. here. Yeah. Oh, look at oh. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. I did not see it either. It's pretty <laughs> smiley looking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very cute little face. He's yeah. doing a good job blending in.
Yeah. It really is. Okay, it must really like the basalts. What are we looking at? What is it? Good question. <laughs> We're going to take a zoom and see if we can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with it's a ray like creature. Let's see. I am all the way in. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling a little bit like bobby and weavy. I'm going to try another approach. Go wide. Thanks for letting me know too, Ryan. That's super helpful. Gotcha. Oh, wow. From this view, you really can't tell he's there unless you already know exactly where to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Much smaller much. than I, I thought when we were zoomed. Yeah, 10 centimeters maybe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Little guy. Okay, go for zoom. Oh, oh cute. No. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, amazing. Hey, buddy. <laughs> really reminds me of the pancake batfish that we saw. Excuse me? On <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm You're now making things up. <laughs> no, that's actually a real common name of an animal. Okay. But um, but I'm not sure. It looks like we, we, we found a few of these in the Galapagos, and they're so memorable, so that's why I remember the name. But I'm How not sure who this guy is. How you forget the name Pancake Batfish? You couldn't batfish. forget the name so of Pancake Batfish, but it looks quite similar. Coral in the Those are cane. yellow, yeah. correct? The starboard side. Pancake Batfish? Some it's of them can be darker, though. I, could, I can see it in bubbles, so oh. I think... Uh, is he that guy? Uh, it's on the rock. Yes, the the big fan off yeah. to the right. Yes, Ooh, this guy. Is that? Yeah, that guy. Yes, totally. Black Thank you. Um, okay, do we want another view of our potential pancake batfish bat <laughs> fish <laughs> thing? <laughs> we have um, a guest in the chat that says it's a batfish. It okay. is a batfish. Do we need more <laughs> close-ups on the batfish? What, um, are, what are our feelings? Mary, I mean, I got some captures. You got good captures? Yeah. Okay, I think we're, we're good then. So thanks for that. Okay, it's I'm exciting. not sure if I didn't do him justice. Like, I want to do him justice. <laughs> <laughs> well, Very we can, delightful. We can take another zoom. Yeah. If you'd okay. Like. I'm not opposed to zoom. Especially, anymore. okay. I think we're Especially all with this happy. lovely yellow coral next to it. Perfect. Okay, go for zoom. Ooh, and a Victor Gorgia down there as well. Just a tiny rotation that I'm finding somewhere. Okay. Someone in the chat asked, is there okay. a difference between skates and rays? I don't know what that is. Okay, I am in a good mm -hmm. position to keep moving. Right. If we're ready, or if there's more stuff we want to look at, we can do that. Uh, do we want to still look for um, the other anemone? No, actually, the one that we found was a different individual, but seemed same. like the same okay. same species. So our scientists awesome. are sure is happy. Um, I think we can keep keep moving along, and we'll keep zooming at things. So moving slowly. Sounds good. Roger that. Bridge now. And keep our eyes peeled for rocks that we can challenge ourselves with sampling. Could we step two zero meters bearing one four zero? Someone the audience wants to let us all know that they want to say thank you for the streams. It's relaxing. A great time for them to watch. Nice. Thanks Happy for joining you. us.
This is a lovely rock here with all these crinoids. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the ship to get moving so we can do a little bit more looking around. Go for zoom. It's like not a problem to keep crinoids in frame. It's just that I couldn't do the batfish. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> crinoids are easy. Totally okay. static batfish are impossible. <laughs> Got it, Kelly. Okay, go wide. I could not even begin to tell you what the difference between the two is, other than the obvious, but. Ooh, and I think there's another one of those um, sea anemone like oh, things. Oh, I see it. Yeah, straight there, ahead. The Corali Totally. Form. It's got a little sponge next to it, maybe. Is that a glass sponge that's right next to it? Uh, looks like it. That's hanging on to a little bit of exposed rock. Go for zoom. Aww, it's so cute. <laughs> nice. Two friends hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Two associates. <laughs> okay, go wide. I love these rocks just like covered in different color crinoids. They're amazing. Definitely. I, I agree. So colorful. Oh, geez. Sorry. <laughs> Stupid. Can I just hit dive mode and I'll give you back the 4K there? Yeah, go for it. Sorry. That's all good. Our scientist ashore, Asako, is very excited about that zoom we just did. Oh, wonderful. You can see the dots okay, on. Okay, let's, let's close in just like a little bit on this. I think like I can just like pan over it, like a half zoom. Okay. Welcome, Lisa from That's Galveston, Texas. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. really is the garden of crinoids. <laughs> sure <laughs> is. Looks like we have a, maybe a flexoid back there on that rock. Could we get oh, a yeah. zoom a little bit to the left of the lasers? There's yep, something. Yep, a little tiny guy, maybe a couple. Yeah. Coral. Right there, yeah. Good eyes, Gabby. You knew what I was talking about immediately. Oh, yep. Absolutely. <laughs> Go for zoom. Yeah, but it looks like a little cup cup, cup coral. <laughs> I'm not sure, from, but here he doesn't look too happy. <laughs> We're invading his space too much. Getting Go buried. Away. Do you have what you need on that data? Yep. Do you want a little more? No, I think we're good. Okay. Wait, is that another one? It looks like so it. Yeah. That might be number five. Number Go for zoom. five, yeah. Yeah. Of these potential Corali morphs. Nice. Is there something special about the Corali morphs? I'm um, not sure, but. Well, in the chat, it looks like they're saying that they're kind of between a stony coral and a sea anemone. Oh, no kidding. Cool. That they're a sea anemone, but they have a skeleton. Oh. What? That's crazy. Okay, go on. <laughs> 
What? We can keep, uh, what do you guys think about keeping on moving? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do, do it. it. Bridge nav. Could we step two zero meters bearing one four zero? We have a question. Um, out of corals and sponges and crinoids, which out of all of them live the longest? Uh, that's a great question. I am not completely sure. I do know that we've Go found presume. black corals up to like 4,000 years old, mm -hmm. but I am not sure how the others fare. I know they can live, at least sponges also, a couple thousand years. Because they're all very slow growing down here. I'm going to just float up the rock. You can keep zoomed in. I think there might be other things to look at as we go. I've got a quick question for you, Gabby. What's up? So that uh, potential sea anemone type that we saw just a minute ago, are we in the same sort of position? Oh, there might be another of a different thing um. right there. Um, as we were when we were looking for that first we've one? We've started we moving further? the ship, but I can stop it if you want. Oh, no. Uh, we were just wondering if, because uh, we're counting the number of individuals, if we count that as number five, or if that was potentially the first one that we couldn't find again. Uh, it's no. It, the, the first one that we couldn't find is back here, before we did the Doppler reset, I think. Okay. Yeah. So that was probably number five then. Yeah, I would guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay, go away. Took my eyes off the prize. Sorry. Hi, Chris Sailors. This dive will last up until midnight. So, seems like apparently deep sea sponges can live to over 10,000 years old. Oh so I they're, they're one of the longest lived creatures on the planet. Yeah, I think they're quite a bit more than the corals, which are wow. more like 4,000. This is a nice, neat rock Ooh. with a Victor Gorgia on it. Yeah. A young 4,000 years old. Wait, yeah. what's living to 10,000 years? <laughs> All relative. Some of the deep sea sponges, I think. Go for zoom. Purple. Why, why, why? I Some think one of the only things that lives longer is the um, How immortal jellyfish. There's oh. immortal jellyfish? Yeah. Is really Let's oh. talk about that. What is that? <laughs> is that the one that could Say potentially more. live forever? <laughs> <laughs> Going back into its Do they just like, like into stage? more jellyfish? They <laughs> can um, retreat to a, they're sort of more regenerative than immortal. Uh, not a biologist, just read like popular science on this because they just sound really cool. Somebody I mean, says immortal <laughs> jellyfish and I'm like, yes, please. I will read that Scientific American article <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, from what I understand, um, I mean, they can still be killed, right, by, um, by like, trauma to their tissues, but um, they can, um, in harsh conditions or in the presence of, like, illness or something like that, they can retreat to sort of, um, like, a polyp state. Like, they sort mm. of regress, and then they regenerate from there, and they stay the same creature doing the same sort of thing, just basically indefinitely. Wow. What do they eat? I have no idea. That's the limits of my immortal, immortal jellyfish <laughs> oh. knowledge. I'm trying to set up in my brain whether I should consider these to be like a vampire jellyfish or they, if they're uh, like. Oh, I see. Yeah. Or just popping in and out of existence. Like what are we? It's like <laughs> butterfly going back into cocoon yeah. and then coming back out. Yeah. Um, sort of maybe. Apparently they eat. Um, they're they're carnivorous and they feed on zooplankton and fish yeah. eggs and mollusks. <laughs> Are you looking up the immor immortal jellyfish right now? Yeah, yep. I just looked it up. Oh, no, nice. Megan just knows all of this off the top of their head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Megan is full of surprises. Wikipedia back here. <laughs> <laughs> that, 
They're yeah. the watch lead for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if there Internet was ever access. something to know about, I feel like it's the vampire jellyfish. <laughs> the vampire oh, immortal. It's immortal. immortal. <laughs> You're like, I said what I said. <laughs> really? like, you it heard me. Immortal. It is immortal. It's not a vampire. Immortal I mean, and Aren't vampires <laughs> immortal? So. Well, there's yeah. the vampire toothless. There's uh, also a, a vampire squid. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Oh, they, but they have like little is. fan guys, right? I, I need to stop talking. I don't know <laughs> science. <laughs> Are you talking about associates now? <laughs> they also have fangs, right? I'd like to go on record as not a marine biologist at this time. <laughs> <laughs> but you're a brilliant mapper. <laughs> Thank you. And navigator. <laughs> so. I'm, uh, I'm here for commentary, <laughs> not for facts. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at this. We got another Ooh. anemone. And then an anemone. Nice. Let's get a zoom on that. Okay. Go for zoom. Ooh, so this one is definitely different from before. It's on the rocks and no dots on it. And is that a tiny little whip curl that's up to the right um, of it? Do you guys have what you need thing? here? Yes, I'm okay. not sure I see what you're seeing, Amber. Go a little bit wider and see if we can find it. That's all right. I don't see it either. <laughs> there is a little cup coral, though, down to the left. Ooh. Oh, yeah, oh yes, there is. And our science chat says, this time, this Go is a true sea anemone. <laughs> a true what? It's uh, a regular anemone. Oh, not one that's not like a half coral? Not the Corallimorph. Corallimorph. Yeah. Go wide. Okay. Welcome, Veronica. Thank you for tuning in to Nautilus Live. Oh, what is that over to the left that's just stalking out? Just that big, hmm. Crinoid? It could be, but I don't, oh, yes it is. I couldn't see the end of it, the flower <laughs> portion, for a bit. Trying to hide from us. <laughs> I wanted to pretend to be something it wasn't. But also, these are not plants, which is kind of always blows my mind whenever yes. I like come back to that thought. Yeah. They're fauna. So pretty. Oh my gosh, the color. That's like Bambi. <laughs> you've got your Bambis and you've got your plants. Okay, go wide. I guess we are wide. I didn't even have to zoom on that one. That one was like right in my face. It wanted to wow. be seen. It what, did what? It, it wanted to be seen. Yeah, it did. <gasps> I really like these long fronded like feather duster ones. Yeah. Oh. And is there a coral off to the left? Likely. Yeah, yes, it looks like I think something. so. If we were ever going to be seeing a coral, this would be the place. <laughs> is it okay to use a bubble for a second? Yeah, go for it. Just a quick perusal of the gauges. Sure. Pilots, we have someone in the go audience. Listening. Thank you, Brandy. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> 
They say, what are the first steps in starting a career as an ROV pilot? Look at this little crab what guy. Is, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. He's so cute. Sorry to interrupt, Brandy, Sorry, but we yeah. have a little shelled critter that is um, um, stealing the show. Well, so, <laughs> uh, Where is it? It's right it's below right. the lasers, up at the top of the screen. That's not helpful. That little reddish thing? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's trying moving. To, it's trying yes. to drag like a shell around or something. It's bringing its mobile home yeah. with it. Has mm -hmm. a very big he, mobile home it has. Yeah, I don't know if it has the horsepower for mountain passes <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I know the feeling. <laughs> it's a big old shell, it's, it's dragging. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, um, we were looking at something else, and Brandy uh, was asking a question on behalf of a listener mm -hmm. about how do you get started on career in ROVs? Yeah, like what the first step would be. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You want to um, try? Yeah, well, I can speak to my experience. Go um, on. I, was, I, I had, went to a community college for um, like general engineering, um, and I did different kinds of like club activities um, within my college, like a uh, STEM club um, and volunteering with uh, May ROV competitions um, and kind of got uh, interested in um, seeing what working on, on vehicles would be like. And so I searched for at sea internships um, the Nautilus has one. Um, that was my first time going to sea and getting uh, experience working on the vehicles. Um, but there are many, many, many different ways to do this, um, to get here. Uh, and I recommend reading or perusing the um, bios for the people that have worked on the Nautilus, um, on the nautiluslive.org um, web page that's what i did as a student was like the same idea like trying to identify the rungs in the ladder of um making this a oh, career for yourself um, you so checking those out um, and figuring out uh different programs you might want to look into uh, is a great start yeah thank you for that kylie One six two, Raj. Very marginal. Yeah, we've got a uh, ridge system coming up. Um, a lot coming up. I'll show you quickly oh, here, so you know what we're doing. Go Yarrow. for zoom. Yeah, I'll pull, pull it up. Um, we're gonna come up in this valley because mm -hmm. our our heading, our next waypoint is right up there, and we have been tracking in a direction so that would yellow. have taken us mm -hmm. with the vehicles up against coral, that lateral wall. Mm -hmm. um, okay, go wide. So I'm going to have us try to and shoot more down the middle, and we can apply Did you have what uh, you need there? Does that seem like a safe? I think we're good, yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, <laughs> it seemed we're better good. to put, Thank okay, you. put us in the middle than have the ship over the top and the vehicles pressed against. So we're going to approach this uh, coming a little bit further in the middle here rather than trying to hug too close before we know what that slope actually looks like. Sweet. Does that sound good? So yeah. uh, you want one, you're thinking 162 you said? Yeah 162 is the bearing to the actual waypoint here and then we can sort of back off and adjust as we start seeing what our situation looks like. Okay that sounds great. So 162 is right here. Okay. And the waypoint is down at the very bottom there, in right inside that sort of canyon feature. Yes. Okay. So we're going to kind of crawl up this canyon, and I'm setting us up for maybe a cautious approach so that we don't uh, do anything crazy. I like that. Sounds good. Let's do it. Now I guess we're doing. We're <laughs> it's happening. We're currently doing. <laughs> we're almost halfway through. That's <laughs> it's almost done. Now, uh, are we going point two right now, or what? Oh, uh, yeah, we're going 0 0.2 knots. Okay, great. Um, also, Gabby, mm -hmm. when we get a chance, I can reset this. Okay. We're drifting off the DVL. Yeah, again. it's just going to do that on this really steep slope yeah. just forever, always. So once we get too far off, we can yeah. remedy. Yeah. 
or like as long as the sonardine is being really well behaved like this we can set vehicle position to sonardine as long okay. as you don't change the master position Raj. I'll do that now, okay. unless it's going to trip you up. Nope, not at all. All right, changing vehicle marker to USBL. Great. To stone. And now a listener would like to know what was your introduction to marine or general science that brought you to this job? Um, that could be for the front or back row. It's a great question. Anybody want to share? Um, I started out, I went to school looking for marine biology programs. Uh, and as my aforementioned commentary would indicate, I did not pursue marine biology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ended up as a, a marine geologist slash hydrographer, which means like I went through a program at the College of Charleston uh, that has a seafloor mapping focus nested within the, the geology degree. Uh, so basically what happened was I started out marine bio and then can we try to get a zoom on? Yeah, on don't this. mean to interrupt oh, now, oh, but no over to the left, it looks like a stalk of something might be a bamboo and might have a little branch near the top of it. Very exciting. Oh, no, not no, sure that's no, a bamboo. It's not. No, it looks like maybe. Is yeah. that a, Is that a black I'm going to get yeah. it backed by the sand, or I'm not going to be able to see it at all. It's really dark. Yeah. Sorry about that, Naya. <laughs> oh, no worries. That's what we're here for. Um, yeah, I ended up uh, in a seafloor mapping program because I was able to get field experience uh, and go out to sea, and that was really what I realized I wanted to do um, more than necessarily spending time doing a particular kind of research. Mm -hmm. I just really enjoy the problem solving and the environment of Okay, at sea go for zoom. And I also really enjoy maps, so that worked out. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So it's sort of a wispy yeah. black coral, hey? It looks like it, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. With some, what a are little those little bags. pink? Are those little baby brittle Probably stars? Br yeah. Yeah. kind of looks like it, yeah. <laughs> They're so small. Super tiny. And I'm not sure about the others, Brandy, but uh, for me at least, I am a very much on land sort of geologist. This is my first time actually being out to sea and uh, working on submarine rocks in general. So that's kind of my start is kind of right here, right now. Awesome. Do you have what you need data? Yes, thank okay. you. Go away. Ryan, do you want to share your story? Sure. Um, so I studied marine bio in undergrad, and I think the thing that I was drawn to initially was just not being behind a desk every day. I think that was like the biggest appeal of doing something in STEM that wasn't, I don't know, or just doing something that wasn't um, boring, quote unquote, <laughs> but that's yeah. extremely subjective. Um, yeah, can you repeat the question again, actually? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the question was, what was your introduction to marine or general science can you go for zoom? that brought you yeah. to this job? Sorry, one second, zooming. Looks like another anemone. Or a coralomorph, maybe? I can't tell what type of this yeah. one is, because it's got sediment on it. That's true. But I would say this is a regular one. Yep. With my very 
limited it's knowledge. It's got the dots. It has the dots. Oh, now I see, I see the dots. dots. Oh. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I definitely see dots. Yep. Definitely dotted. Marcel from uh, Canada wants to be sure how to pronounce anemone. Anemone. Uh, did I say it correctly? <laughs> anemone. I think so. Yeah. Mm. Anemone. They okay. get two and uh, pronounce it anemone or anemone. Anemone. I think it, you shouldn't think about it too. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it really fast, and we'll all believe you. <laughs> it's like when you write it with sloppy writing because you don't quite know how to spell it. Oh yeah. That, but with your voice. That's <laughs> slur your words. <laughs> What's that? Good question, Marcel. Thanks <laughs> Sorry for we had a bad answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Marcel. <laughs> Go for Zoom. Oh. oh. Is that being predated upon? Maybe. If you read my mind, Gabby, I was vaguely gesturing back here at this. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the last two months of last year looking at these corals with Steve. So I'm I'm in the habit now. And also <laughs> reading scientists' minds. Yeah. <laughs> doing that too. <laughs> it's a skill. I, I didn't want to come off as presumptuous, but yes, that. <laughs> Translation. <laughs> okay, go on. They, wow, look at all of the, the crinoids really like that edge. They're right uh -huh. up near and the then sediment. Mm -hmm. We've got another maybe yellow crinoid off it. to the, yeah. not crinoid, uh, uh, coral. coral. Plexoid? Yeah. Yep. Hey, Bob. Looks like it. Shalom. Ryan, you can continue sharing your story. You're available. Can you repeat the question one more time? <laughs> it was in the middle of a Zoom, I think. I, I it was, lost focus. Uh, what was your introduction to marine or general science that brought you to this job? Um, yeah, so I studied marine bio in undergrad, and that was really my first introduction to taking any courses like that. Um, I didn't really have courses like that provided to me in high school. But then related to this specific job, I took a course on environmental Weather? film and media which really got me interested in video work, and that's kind of how I ended up here. Nice. Um, back row, uh, we were thinking we'd do just a little bit of arm troubleshooting, if you don't mind, if there isn't something immediate that you want to take a look at. That's I'm totally fine. It. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, say again? That's that's totally fine, go ahead. Okay, yep. sounds good. So we should stop the ship, or? The are ship you? is stopped. Okay. Timely. Excellent. Okay. Hold on, Bob. Hold on. Bender stays on. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for sharing your clarification. Anemone. Okay. So I will hit this. Yeah. Yep. There it is. It's happy. It's hung up, but it's happy. Okay, it's off, it's off. <laughs> I turned it off. We're good. It's not happy. Sorry. Let me know when you want to try your next thing, Bob. Okay. Are we ready to uh, move along here? Yes. Is everybody ready to move on? Um, we might be interested in um, a rock sample, if it's possible with the port arm. There was Ye a crinoid on a rock that we just saw. Okay. Yeah, it's off to the right side. I mean, off to the right side. Oh, it was off to the yeah. right, not to the left. 
I'm not sure which one. Um, I think. Hmm. I think it was over here. What do you think? Steve says we're oh, actually Steve. right on top of it. Okay. okay. Oh yeah, it's right. I think it's right here. Okay. And then yeah. we could use the front to bumper to test if it's loose. As the ROV goes deeper, does it affect the driving with increased pressure? I assume it does, mm -hmm. but not totally. I feel like, hmm. I think once we're Utterly done with adventurous. our attempt here, we can get our pilots yeah, to I chime think. in on that. Yeah, they'll have a better answer than me speculating. <laughs> <laughs> Which rock would you like? <laughs> this one. Uh, a garage. Okay, cool. Let's get it. What was the question, Brindy? Um, okay. As the ROV goes deeper, does it affect the driving with increased <laughs> pressure? Does the pressure affect how it drives? Mm hmm. Yes, is the short answer. Uh, they will have a much better and elaborate answer. But <laughs> <laughs> we've actually been uh, right. with being at the equator and working on. Um, like working through the really warm water lens at the surface has been changing probably some of the, not. the pressures in the vehicles as well. Okay. So it's definitely calibrated for pretty specific um, thermal and pressure environments. Mm. Okay, letting it settle out, you're good? Looks good. Looks good. Raj. Let's give this a go. We can. Let's go then. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, rest up. Shoulder down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this, this is a, this is an out loud thing. This guys. is a fun <laughs> one because it's like you move one function at a time. <laughs> Ooh. Let's see. This is what we've trained for, Kylie. Yeah. <laughs> this is the moment. Um, can we get a really nice zoom also? Oh, yeah. Get Maybe that first. before you, nice yeah, before you, yeah. before you touch that. Yes. <laughs> okay, go for zoom. Now's the time. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> Okay, good for our zoom. Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Um, come, Go come not completely wide. How, uh, yeah, a little bit like that. That's cool. Ooh. Let's go up. How big is this arm? Oh. Uh, how do you mean? I don't know. It just looks really big to me. <laughs> it's just chunky. I'll we'll yeah. say. <laughs> sort of thick compared worth, to the other one. Yeah, I'm not used it's to a looking little at bit. It. I think it's a little worth bit trying, shorter. And definitely stouter. Okay. It was it was doing a lot with my depth perception when we were looking yeah, at the rock. Yeah, totally. I don't know if his fingers are big enough to open for this, but we can try to get a bit of it. We can try. We're going to try. We're going to try. Yeah, it. I think we're going to try. Okay. Okay. It does look a lot like a turtle. Yeah, it really does. Ugh. No. Oh. Uh, Let's see 
attributes. So just like for future reference, I'm looking at this rock and it looks like it's a bit over 10 centimeters, maybe 15 to 20 even. I would, I'd say yeah. about 20, yeah. We're gonna need maybe a smaller rock. Yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm bailing on this. I think he's playing dead for us. <laughs> and then we'll swim <laughs> off later. <laughs> Okay, um, if that's if that's too big, then I'm gonna try maybe from from right there or something. Let's see. Okay. See the little. It also may be attached. It might not be loose, so we'll see. Oops. I did not that. There are maybe the ones to the right are a little bit smaller. I don't know. Or maybe they're much bigger and actually attached. Yeah, mm -hmm. the way I'm seeing it, it looks like all of these might be attached now yeah. that we're sitting here, but oh. underneath the sediment. Yeah, attached. it kind of looks like it, but we can we can give it a, a nudge and see what we see what happens. Yeah, I think's not. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, well, we're seated with the ship stopped. Was there anything else you wanted to test? No. I was, I'm not going to get it. Not, not this one. Okay, that's fine. Thanks for trying. No problem. I think that everything we're seeing over, oops, over in this area looks like it's pretty attached, but possibly over there. Yeah. Little guy. Yeah, that might. I'm just putting this guy. Leave it like that. Okay. It's like a bayonet. Well, how, yeah, let's see how big how big that is. It might it might be <laughs> might, uh, yeah. Um I think I know what one you mean, but do you mind telestrating? Yeah. Well, I just, I'm curious how big yeah, that one is. The one, is Raj, that like okay. five centimeters or something? Um, perhaps. Uh, Gabby, how big do you think it is? Your office bill. Okay. That, that might be too small for us. Okay. It's also moderately sediment yeah, covered. That too. Um, Okay, thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Okay, you got plenty of time to think about it. Huh. Yeah, there's gonna be a very narrow window, it looks like, of like rocks that we might be able to sample with Yeah, mm -hmm. it seems like it. Arm. All right, well, well. What about the one like beyond, um, like in the middle of the screen towards here? the right, a little bit further down? I was thinking, okay, um, like straight down here. From, yeah, that one is not too sediment covered, right? Yeah, I think like that right there might yeah. be okay, but it looks attached to me. Oh, Raj, okay. Um, but we could maybe get a zoom on maybe that it? general area and, and <laughs> sure. see what. I think it. I think looking a for a rock around here is is a good use of our time, if okay. we get one sample. Gabby, are you on SPL? No. Okay. Nope. Now I am. Thank you. <laughs> that looks attached. So we don't need to try that. Okay. Um, can Go zoom I out. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's just kind of keep slowly moving. Um, maybe like around that way. Okay. And look for some some loose rocks. Okay. You can do a casual stash of the 
Or maybe Raj. just a little bit. Just a casual stash. Just <laughs> cash. Just. I don't want you to get too committed because I want us to find a rock. Raj. But I think if we're out there ready, there's no chance of us finding a rock. <laughs> just think it's like too that. hopeful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. It's like me with reading dive plans now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You, you let your secret out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm feeling I'm feeling kind of punchy right now. <laughs> oh my gosh! I can say those these things are on all SPL. bigger like, than those look attached. centimeters too. Yeah. These like are off SPL for all the important stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Give the people what they want. <laughs> Looks like we have a really nice current coming through here. We've got so many crinoids right in this little area. Poking there. And oh. they're just following straight up this line. Yeah. yeah. All of these rocks look pretty attached um, and also very large. Not Do we have potentially another oh, yeah. uh, sea urchin? Can, uh, can we get uh, the sample first? See if we see a sample and then do it? Um. Or is that a holothurian? Oh, yeah, that looks yeah. like a holothurian. Yeah. Can we get a zoom on that possibly? This sure one right thing. here? I was going to look at that coral. Oh, yeah, that too. I think that's an anemone. Oh yeah, now it looks now like it looks like it. Oh, and there's another one to the <laughs> left as well. So two of them over here. Oh, Go yeah. for zoom. <laughs> oh, it's that half ah, coral, half anemone. It's the our dot coralomorph. A coralomorph. Gabby, Steve says that's so? okay. No one has claimed the free fifty dollar reward and secret code message. <laughs> and he put in the dive plans. <laughs> 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 This is the first dive plan I didn't read, I promise. <laughs> I've read them all till today. <laughs> and then we're having a great dive. Go ahead. That was quick. <laughs> I think Steve was telling me like yesterday or something that apparently my advisor used to do that with dive plans. <laughs> Put secret messages in it. Are you serious? That's hilarious. That's awesome. I don't know. I'm also idea. not sure if he's listening, so I don't know if he can confirm or deny that. <laughs> I do him? not see a green dot next to his name. Ah. Uh. That one's almost like. Doesn't that mean he's not kind of listening. Going on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just our light? What's that? This. What's that? Oh yeah, the different colors. I don't know. Yeah, it's like washed out on the edges. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> oh. Rock, 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 rock. Are these rocks, oops, sorry. Are these rocks, um, <laughs> they just nice pointed pivot. them right at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, are those loose? Do we think, I, I'm not sure, but maybe, maybe one of those, yeah. Okay. I mean, the top one does look like it would be within the size limit. Yep. It also does have a fair amount of sediment covering the top of it, though. That's also true. But it's worth trying. And then there's some awesome corals off oh, to the left yeah. of it, too, for zoom afterwards. It's gorgeous with a dark background. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually a little bit bigger than I thought now, too, that rock. Yeah, it looks about 10 centimeters. Maybe a okay. little bit less. Which one are you looking at? This one? Oh, I was actually looking one. at the one on top. This one you, you were thinking? Yeah. Okay. Which one? Sorry. Um, oh, oh uh, one second. Amber, so you were thinking of that one? That's what I thought you were talking about, but that one's more sediment covered, yeah. so it's not as nice. I think that we should try for that one. That okay. one looks... Okay. Sounds good. Okay. I will set up for it. Okay. Thank you. Do you... Um, agree that the one right below it is too big? 
Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure we're on the same page. Definitely. The jaws of the Magnum don't open quite as far as the right. craft. Oh. Got like a little TMJ there. How do the arms get their names? That's, they think that's the brand or like the, like the, the manufacturer. manufacturer. Yeah. So the craft is made by craft. It's the model is a predator. Oh, craft. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I, when we say craft, are we talking? Um, no. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was this my this first thought. <laughs> no. No. We're they have a diverse not. portfolio. We're a much smaller company. Gotcha. Craft singles. Okay. It's still craft with a K. Um, I'm going to bring you down a little bit okay. because it's, there's a little tug going on here. We're going to get a zoom on the rock. Yep. Before? Okay. Once they kind of stop moving, we'll get a nice zoom on it before gotcha. poking. Before poke. Exactly. Okay. No, um, it's a little too far to the center. I'm going to need to get it over to a better reaching zone for you. Do you think I could reach it? I think not <laughs> in a way where you can get that, like, get a really good grab on it. I think you're going to end up chasing it away. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do, yeah. I think we really want it close to the port side and pretty pretty near underneath it some so you of, don't chase it. Some of the most intricate um, dual arm ops that we did was last year with um, Tamara Baumgartner. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Oh, I really like working with her. Yeah, and we did hydrate samples. Oh, nice. With um, using the Magnum to hold the hydrate sample sampler um, up against the hydrate and then using the oh, craft yeah, yeah, to, totally. to, to like, drill fun. it into it. Yeah. Oh, those are so fun. I do like those samplers. They're a good time. Super slippery, though, and they want like the clean part of the hydrate, which is like not the whole enchilada. So mm -hmm. you have like a very small surface to dig into, and then you have to keep it there. It's wild. This is an off-topic question, but uh, a viewer would like to know what was the name of the birds on deck, and they're called the red-footed boobies. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. That is correct. That is correct. There were a lot of them. They love Palmyra. <laughs> <laughs> and they loved our ship. They sure did. <laughs> okay. Happy? Do you think that's close enough in? Yeah. Let's give it a go. Let's do it. If it's not, we'll find out. Yeah. We'll discover together. <laughs> All of us as a team. All of us with the whole interwebs. Okay. Rest <laughs> up. Why exactly do we not are oh, hold on. Let's staying get a zoom away on it. from oh, the Raj. sediment covered I'll rocks? I'll get my wrist out of there. Out of because Go what we're video? looking at for these rock samples is we're trying to get something that has a good surface area for that feral manganese Dana, crust because it's constantly you growing. Go. And yes. so the more okay. surface you area so you have, okay. kind wider. of the more places can, and the better chances of it sort of accumulating so more of it. And then so if it's closer. really sediment covered, you're kind okay, of hindering the growth of that crust. I may actually have you too far to port there. I don't know. Perfect. Because you don't have any more azimuth out, do you? I don't. I don't. I was gonna shoulder down, and I think I was gonna ching right on top okay. of it. Okay. Let's see it. But I, I just I wanna hold on. Just I wanna wrist lift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's got I'm it. Like, I'm getting there. It's progressive. I know. I'm flow. 
like <laughs> just give me a second um okay what am i doing uh okay i think um just a little more elbow up and then i will try to set that in a happy way a little bit less a little bit open uh, relax the jaw open a little bit more wrist left and I think if I go down we'll just see where we kind of line up with a shadow does I the magnum arm up. have the same controller as the regular arm no or? okay no we just move one joint at a time Shoulder down, a little bit of shoulder right, a little bit of sh elbow up, a little bit of wrist left. Is it helpful to say it out loud, everybody? <laughs> it, it seems <laughs> you're like it. <laughs> you're putting Marvel number five in my head, actually, Kylie. <laughs> okay, so oops, I'm on it. Raj, that is attached, I promise. Um, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's like in the ground. You definitely yep. started this cruise good with number five. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty good. Oops, 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 oops. You're doing Shoulder great. Up. Shoulder up. Just doing push-ups. Okay, with so we're the not going to do this rock. No. No. Okay. Thank you for trying. No problem. It's difficult. Wrist down. For our next bit, can we do Wrist. some zooms on that rock that's out in I'll front of us down. that has the corals? Yes, for sure. Looks beautiful. I'm gonna see if I can come at it uh, from this side so we get that like nice dramatic black Great. background. I don't know if I'll fit, but I will sure try. Oops. We actually have like kind of like a, a guard on the back of the vehicle, like a rear bumper, just for people like me. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna do a gauge check. Okay, Raj, totally. Just okay, uh, go for zoom. Hmm. That's great, I like that half zoom. Just sort of look at everything. Nice. Zoanthids on the yellow? It looks like it, I think. Yeah. But what is the white? I don't yeah. quite have enough tether to do the around the other side, black background thing. I don't have much to give you. That's okay. No, I know. Okay. I like hmm. the umbrella shapes of all of these Me crinoids too. here. <laughs> yeah, very <laughs> umbrella. Almost palm tree-esque. Yeah, totally. So it's a plexarid, partly covered with zoanthids. Okay. We've been watching it. It's been around 10,000, um, at least for my peaks. Uh, that looked like it was just sitting at five. I, I see. You've got it right here. Yeah. I mean, this is not a very good one, but the white polyps okay. are so good. Right yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Tim's working on the other one. Brush. That's what this is. Is there any critters in particular here that you want to look closely at? I think we just got some great zooms, so I okay, can great. just keep moving around. Yeah, are we ready to uh, continue into this little canyon area, or do we want to keep cruising in this okay, go vicinity? Um, yeah, we can keep moving slowly around here. Um, okay. And Gabby and, yes. and Kylie, I have a question for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. How possible do you think it would be if we saw one of those coralomorphs, those kind of anemone-like um, creatures, to try and sample it with a suction? Yeah, to try <laughs> to like get real close I and suction would on. Love to try. Yeah. Okay, that would be a, of great interest to our scientists ashore, Osako. So, I think if we see another one of those, we'll want to okay. stop the ship and and see yeah, if we can totally. line up. Roger that. It, I think that it's going to very much depend 
where the critter is okay. like where it is with respect to the bumper because one thing we can't do is like angle the vehicle down right it would be awesome if it was on like a rocky outcrop right in front of us or yes. on an upsloping sediment patch or something like that okay perfect you see what i mean i completely see what you mean yeah, yeah. all right well, we'll we look saw around. a bunch of them just now didn't we yeah yeah there was a whole lot okay. and we are going into an area that there will be a lot of upslope to work with okay so excellent yeah, I think it's absolutely worth a try. Cool. We have Lisa, a listener, wanting to know um, why both of the manipulative arms aren't made so that they can both perform the same task or function. Um, I think part of it is cost, mm -hmm. actually. Um, they also weigh different amounts, um, have different grip strengths, um, and sort of different capabilities. Uh, we actually use the, so the port arm is stronger, um, though it's less delicate at its tasks. Um, and I think it might be less expensive than the starboard arm. Um, but it, to have something like that allows you to have two arms. I don't know, do you know differently, Kylie? No, I would say all of those same points. Can we zoom on this C pen? Oh yeah. Okay, go for zoom. Oh. There's lots of different styles of like design choices you can make with a ROV, like how many thrusters you have, where you place them in the vehicle. Um, it just depends on what types of things you want to optimize. Um, okay, go ahead how much payload you want to have available. So um, if you compare it to Herc to other uh, working class vehicles, you can kind of see how they would um, operate differently based on how they uh, their tooling is set up um, and their thrusters and things like that. Are we noticing that it's more biology at the shallower depths than it is at the deeper depths? We're gonna do a quick pilot <coughs> swap up here. Okay. I'm not sure. I think we would have to really look at the same place in the both deep water and the shallow water to say that for sure. Mm -hmm. Cause there are some deep water areas that are full of critters. Yeah, it's definitely uh, relative to a lot of different things. So uh, a lot of these critters are wanting to get into the current. So we could be at the same depth in one area with very few um, animals and then in another area where it's positioned well in the current and there could be a lot of, a lot more density. But but yeah, we're, we're kind of here to figure that out. Where are the different animals living? Who's here? and trying to get a sense of how that changes over these depths. Let me think about that for a second, okay? Is that a coral over to the left of the screen? Coral to the left of the screen? Roger. Yeah. Looks like maybe a black coral. Looks like it. Thank you for your question, John. We really appreciate you zoom. tuning in to Nautilus Live. Uh, 
Um, come wide. For how long? If you're comfortable, then I'm comfortable. Ooh, what's that to the left? Um, are we happy continuing up? Yes. <coughs> yep. Nav. Ooh, is that an erratic oh. orgy? Ooh. Ooh. That's a tall one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While not getting caught in it, there's also a sea star back behind it to the left. Okay. Let's see the sea star. We're gonna center down the spiral. Does that mean I get like hurt points or something? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Video, can you zoom about half for me? That's cool. Like a little bit more. Give me a three quarters. There you go. That's cool. It's like the feeling of like all the stars aligning at once. It's awesome. <laughs> I think I've gotten it once. <laughs> you like know. You're just like, ah, I'm there. It's especially helpful when you have a dark background. Yeah. Yes, I do. Can you zoom video? Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, oh beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, come on. <laughs> A whole new kind of imagery. Okay, video zoom. Oh, come back. I saw that. Did anybody else see oh, that go by? Oh, two of the things thrusted, aligned for a bit. Thrusted it away from me. Oops, get out of there. Get out of there. Got kind of a cool view in the 4K right now. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Why is the 4K so green? Like the 4K. It wasn't as green in previous dives. Do you know why? Didn't we change something with lighting? Yes. That? And that's Earlier. when it started turning green? We were looking down the barrel of a sponge. Yeah, but didn't I thought we put the lighting back, but maybe um, we didn't. So the we only did. thing that's happened is that the 4K got tilted up a little bit. It is a little bit on the green side. Um, I gotta go. And... I could tell you how to adjust that. That's, That's going to okay. be, there's a color balance. No worries. That we haven't done. Can we look at that C pen and that coral that's back off slightly down to the right? Mm -hmm. No, I have to go. <laughs> so, okay. uh, I can tilt down for you. Um, oh, okay. We still do have the ship moving, too. Right. Okay. Yes. really don't want this 4K in front of me. Uh. Hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that another black coral in front of us? Um, Do we I get a zoom on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's another coralomorph, potentially. Would you uh, zoom? Right behind it? No, it's off up to the left. Um, that might and be cup a pernoid. I think we saw this earlier, and is that a fish? It's yeah. a shrimp, shrimp, right? I think. Shrimp. Oh, shrimp. Yeah, I'll go with shrimp. Yeah, it's a paracalyptrophora. Okay. Mm. How's that data? Is that okay? Do you need anything else? Oh, uh, I'm. Good on zooms. Okay, come on. Thank you. Oh, there is one right literally behind it, another one of those uh, These, yeah, anemones. Right. Oh, yeah. Right it here. Does. Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. It second. looks to be slightly upslope. Shall I stop the ship? Um, yeah. Maybe so we could get a zoom first. Or you could stop the ship and then decide. Yeah, let's definitely stop the ship ahead of time because this will take a little time and energy to line up. Okay. 
Um, there's also, uh, there will almost certainly be collateral damage below it. Because uh, mm -hmm. we have to get the bumper right in over the coral below it. Uh, okay. What about we can't the get in one on. that's further in top? We can we can definitely explore around just a little bit. There might be a better angle to come up at it. Okay. Um, but that's definitely just something to keep in mind. Okay. Because um, we have to get the whole vehicle's front end right up yeah. against the... Even like, if I go to yeah, the... Definitely check it out. Turn, Absolutely. I think still... So I think fine. Amber has a good idea. There's there might be one further up at the top oh, left. I see that. Okay, Roger. Maybe we could look at that instead. one. Yeah. yeah. Let's get up there. Good eye. Good eye, good eye. Anybody else play softball? <laughs> <laughs> that actually seems like a very nice setup. Yeah. And that looks like a Coralomorph from here. here. Yep, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Nice. Right. Okay. Oh, I love that zoom. Raj. Okay. I agree. The deep sea is so fascinating. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. Okay, Kylie. Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, um, actually, let me flush first. And um, which jar do you want this to go into, Science? Uh, jar two. OK, Roger, jar two. How uh, many samples have we collected so know, far sorry. today? I have record of I one other sample. I think we've only Randy. gotten two samples total. From both watches? Just yeah, two so one previous sample and then what we're about to do. That's right. Thank you for tuning in, Edward. Welcome to Nautilus Live. Um, Science, will you repeat the name of this? Uh, Coralomorph. Coral, is that spelled like corral and morph? Uh, C-O-R-A-L-L-I and then morph. Sweet, thank you. Okay. Kylie, I think what I was thinking was uh, just set up the suction and have you fly in with suction already going. What do you think? Okay, sample jar two. That's not two. I can try again. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's nice to see it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got it. Go for it. It might just come right up, and that would be amazing. Suspense. <laughs> <laughs> These things can't swim, can they? 
Not to my knowledge, but you know, I'm surprised every day in the deep sea, so I don't they think probably so. can. They might. <laughs> You can always go to nautiluslive.org and check out our career section to see about the internships and their competitiveness. No, they do not swim. One of our scientists ashore just come from that. <laughs> I would be very surprised if they did. <laughs> Other anemones can swim, and one called Serianthus can jump. Whoa. Thank you, Asako. That's intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I will scream. Listeners would like to know how heavy is our Hercules and Argus. Hmm. I can answer that. So there's two measurements of this that are important. One is their weight in water and one is their weight in air. Um, in water, Argus weighs about 3,000 pounds or 4,000 pounds. Um, in air, Argus weighs like somewhere around 3,000 pounds to 4,000 pounds. Herc in air weighs, I think, maybe around 6,000 pounds. There are people who know the exact numbers. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I think it's around 6,000 pounds. But in water, Herc is buoyant by about 45 pounds. So it's negative of 45 pounds heavy in water. Mm. Yep. Thank you. Yes, it is. And for those of you who are tuning in, um, each of our watches is four hours long. So this is the 12 to 4 watch. And this dive will last up until midnight. Some beautifully precise flying, though. Our viewers are loving the new angles for the inside of the cameras. Like and the arm, when it was um, doing its thing, like pushed everything back and around. It's not in the optimal place. How much suction is on the uh, suction guy? Most of the beans. All the all the beans. I could give it one more bean. Well, I'm just I'm wondering just like what the number is for a hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no more beans. So is the suction already on, or are you waiting to get to a position to then suction? The suction is already on. Oh. We're just trying to see if we can actually get the nozzle into a position where it can get the anemone. Oh, man, I hope y'all get it. I would love to see this up close.
<laughs> I'll help body, baby. This is a... <laughs> yeah. It's so close. Yeah. That looks right. pretty much perfect, but yeah. yeah. Oh, it's you got this. Come on, little oh. friend. Man. We don't have any more beans. <laughs> you can see all the tentacles are going oh. up. Oh, oh. you can see its little dots going in. It wants to go in. Okay. Um, so I was wrong. That was not the ideal setup. It was slightly off. We want a steeper slope to be able to grab it. Gotcha. Um, you you saw sort of the geometry we were up against there? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. We were very close. That was a really good attempt. That was attempt. gorgeous. Very flying. impressive. Really lovely. Yeah. Thank you all. Awesome. Your patience. Patience. Like the edge of our my seats. My, holding my breath the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Likewise. Um. <laughs> Well, now we know we can look for something a little bit steeper as we keep moving along, and maybe we'll collect a jumping Serianthus <laughs> instead. <laughs> and if we do see another steeper one, um, it's good to note that it might take it a little bit of time to come off the rock. So even if it looks like it's not going, it might be slowly unsticking itself. So okay, um, okay. if we okay. happen upon a good one. All right, are we ready to? Uh, cruise or do we want to take a little spin around this area? Can we do a quick zoom on this coral? Yes, of course. Video zoom. Is this um, a primnoid? Primnoid. I think it's another paracalyptrophora. Go. Yeah. It's looking the same as earlier. Uh, thank you. Oops. Uh, thank you. Video zoom. Uh, come wide. What's that flyer there? Where? What? There's a little... It's orange. It's drifting around. Uh. Oh, I see. Just above the layers, lasers. Uh, video zoom. Get big over here. Hi, Dan. Will any water samples be taken during this dive? No. Or is there a need for it? Um, I don't think we can with the arms, unless can ROV I? has a different thought on that. No, I don't think we can do that. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, we probably would have at some point, but yeah. Can we zoom off to the gonna, bottom right a little bit? It almost looks like there's a sponge that's oh, yeah. laying down. Raj, yeah. I see you. Every time you say a direction, I instinctively look in the other one. I don't know why. I do that too. Anytime <laughs> there's a direction in the chat, <laughs> I'm thinking of the exact opposite. Keep you two out of the nav chair, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you, you really should. <laughs> we all have a bit of job security. Looks like, like a holotherian. It does maybe? look like a holotherian. Hmm. Whichever ho kind of holotherian this is, I always think it's a sponge at first. It does look very spongy. I think like, it's the color. Yeah, and the yeah. texture a little bit. But what feature helps you to realize it's not? Um, the it looks when you were zoomed in. I don't. To me, it looks very different than like a glass sponge. It's much more together. Um. You can kind of, I guess, see at the bottom those little tube feet. Mm -hmm. It looks gelatinous. It's yeah. kind of looks like it's moving around on the sediment and looks a bit more motile than Cecil moving around. Hmm. I see. I was going to ask and then didn't. Lots. There's lots.
viewers would like to know, what do you do when you're not on the watch? That's a great question. A lot of sleeping. Yes, um, sleeping. Especially with this 12 to 4 <laughs> shift. Um, but if we're up, a lot of us on science are processing samples and making sure everything's together and ready for a next dive. Or we're just kind of hanging around. Yeah. Or yeah. doing some ship-to-shore interactions. Oh, yes. Those are always <laughs> so fun. <laughs> we also uh, we map when we can't dive. That's something I, we're technically on shift for, but it isn't a dive shift. Yeah. Um, we uh, also have a gym on board. It's pretty popular. Yeah, pretty much every department has, um, almost every department has an on-watch duty when we're diving, and we also all have things that we work on when we're not diving. And then when we're not doing either of those and we're not sleeping, then we can enjoy other nice things like gym or watching sunsets, yeah. spending time out on deck. Sometimes when the boobies aren't out on deck. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's right. I think we're missing it. It's been a few days. I know. It's a struggle walking up to the van with yeah. that smell. <laughs> Gabby, are you trying to say Coralomorph? <laughs> Coralomorph. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's uh we're 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 game. Let's do it. Does Gabby know she not on ES? SPL? Uh, wait, uh, Gab, Gab, so we're going to try the craft arm, you said? Or? Yeah, it's oh, great. Oh. Ish. Ish. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going right. to try the this craft arm. This is news. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go like, I get shoes, but I Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yep, gotcha. <laughs> cool. Okay, awesome. Nope, we have not moved. I think our last big cluster is probably where it is, right, right here. There is a ship horn, right? On There's a what? ship, is there a horn? A ship horn? Oh yeah, I yeah, I heard definitely. It. They were wondering why we didn't use it to get rid of the birds, but I think they did try that. It just didn't get the boobies away. <laughs> <laughs> boobies have a natural, they're not scared of humans, naturally. Um, so mm -hmm. I think they're pretty hard to like intimidate off the ship. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of upset I was sleeping for all of that. What? Like I wish I saw it. What? I don't want to be out on deck with the birds, but you know. You missed through it. Through a window. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we could change places. You can have all of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have more memories of them than I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are the pilots ready for a question? Sure. They said, uh, what kind of college studies would one take to be a ROV pilot? And how long would it take to be an official pilot? I do. I think we're... It's a great question. <laughs> the one in the <laughs> Looks like there's uh, something right under it, though. 
Pilots might be a little busy right now to answer yeah. that. Squash. Yeah, we'll Squashing. we'll save that question after this sample. Okay. Okay. It's the a one great in the middle? one. To the left of the lasers? That's what you're pointing out. Yes. No. Okay, what about this guy? If down we at the left? zoom in, we can probably uh, look and see. An anemone, Raj. Um, video, can you zoom for me? Uh, um. I'll get closer. I'll get closer. Oh, I, I think it might dots. be. Oh, yeah, I that might. Okay, can you come wide? Yeah. Can you imagine if I could get it with this, just the, without picking it up? I'm just like, oh, it's a perfect setup now. We just do it with the suction gun. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is a good setup right now. <laughs> You're welcome to try. <laughs> FYI. I get skittish when I get close to things. I don't want to overrun them. And I back up and I like, just got to do it again. Just got to do it again. Might just be poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking for that one. It's really sediment covered. Raj, do you want me to go down? Ugh. I'm like I wanna like push into the wall and I wanna stick lock, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what yeah, Raj. Sorry guy. That's life. Auto head. Oops, it is an auto head. Yeah. Center. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Do you want a really good zoom on this? Yes, please. Oops, that's the wrong <laughs> um, let me just uh, get the. Oh, you are so good. Um, video zoom. <laughs> 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 no, it's all right, uh, Ryan. I'll I'll get you there. I'll get you there. I'm sorry. Okay. What you got for? It? Yeah. Ooh. Oh wow! Nice zoom. All right. I got some good captures. If we wanna start trying to slurp it up. Okay. <laughs> Come wide. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, get yourself on the right uh, page so that you can kill the valve. Roger, Roger. Okay, okay. So, and can you do me a favor and look uh, to your starboard with the, uh, yes, perfect. Um, okay, you can hit the valve. Yep, you just hit it again. Looks okay. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's kill the bender. 
I can do that real quick. Okay. Uh, I'd actually, why don't you just stay over on the valve page? Yeah, totally. Bender's off. Let's see if it can handle this. Um, I can do the controls if you just want to focus on the... Okay. I do like that view better. That's a, yeah, that's a really good one. Oh, is this sample chart, sample jar two still? Yes, that's still good. Roger. <laughs> I think that this season, I like rocker wrist better. Last year, I definitely liked the other one. Ooh, this may be a little big for the suction. <laughs> oh. uh, we can try a grab. There's also maybe two baby ones up to the top right. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like the you want to try and get a zoom on this? <laughs> I don't even yeah. know how to fit. <laughs> So small. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think? Um, Asako is typing. Yeah. Yeah, we can second. also try and maybe grab the Corallomorph. The, corall the larger Corallomorph. Uh, it might cause it a little more damage, but. Uh, Asako I'm says right. yes, this is one. Oh, sweet. So Let's just slurp it up. Great. Yeah. Can okay. you go Sounds wide good. video? Good eyes, everyone. I know. <laughs> so small. I didn't even see it. Um, have to change our what? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, sorry. I'm oh, gotcha. so I'm really sorry. So if it's possible, we, yeah. we would like to try to get both of the little babies. Okay. Um, and they can go into the same jar. Okay. And that's one sample. Yeah, got yeah. it. Thank you. Okay, oh, it's okay. gonna be a little difficult to zoom, but we can get video, can you zoom and just, oh, nice. 
Yeah, let's get a zoom on that. We need a zoom on this guy anyways for, uh, for science stuff. All right, I got some captures. Come on. Okay. Okay, um, you can come out just a little bit there, video, just enough so I can see the arm. Yeah, that's great. And I'll run that. Wow, he really doesn't want to come up. <laughs> so if you can't get the baby, that tells us a lot about the bigger ones. That's true. <laughs> Very strong. Uh, can you go wide video? Steve thinks that the base might be calcified. Mm. Okay, can you go for the zoom again? It might give me a slightly better... Would it mess up the s if they were to use the soup, the scoop? Yay. Yay. Nice. Oh. Oh. oh, yay. Excellent. Oh. Did somebody I remember see it why I got used to using the um, follower arm. I did you see the see creep? Yet. No. Pilots, did you see it in the jar? Not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. Um, video, can you go wide? And uh, can you look down? Let's see if I'm stretching the tube too far. Yeah, Raj. That's it. Oh, we're not there yet. Great. We have just enough left. I, I haven't seen it. Yeah. But sometimes it does take. So uh, let's get a zoom on this next one. We can just start working on the next one, and maybe the last one will show up. Took a wrong turn. Yeah. Um, video zoom. Do you guys, uh, Data, do you have what you need of this to document this one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Data, are we treating these as, as the same sample? Yes, this is uh, one sample. Right. So. <laughs> this one doesn't want to come up either. Come wide video. Okay, now it's just uh, a waiting game. So can you pan down just a little bit? Yeah. Right. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. 
If, if we move, then yes. If we don't, just wait. Don't worry about bubble. I it's know. all good. So if we don't if we don't see it in the jar, do you think that it could get stuck in the tube or what it what might have happened here? It could, but do you see like a little bit of red in like the mesh? Yeah, I do see that. Like that gives me in like the, the little bits the I sand, yeah. the sediment, yeah. It's giving me indication. I mean it's in the it's in the tube, yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Gabby, what are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts are almost ready. Okay, I'm brought loading. <laughs> yeah, they're not <laughs> quite ready yet. Those <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Okay, uh, my thoughts are, we should stop this and see. It's pretty hard to see with the glare. I could turn porch light off. Well, or you can, or whatever. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Um, okay, you can kill craft valve. Craft valve kill. And we don't need to be so, no, we don't need to be so focused on it. Yeah. See. Sorry. Maybe it's down. Ugh. Maybe. So many lights. I know, there's so <laughs> many yeah. lights. Maybe there's this one. It's that one. Uh, <laughs> you can't see anything except for the tube. I know. It's the lasers look like eyes. Has, yeah. The camera has like a little like ring of LEDs on it. So oh, you Raj. get lights from it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see them in there, um, but we've run the... We've run the jar for a while. We can run flush as we go too, and maybe just keep an eye on it. So yeah, that's my question. If we if we ran the flush and they were in the tube, would we then lose them? Uh, well, I guess I mean we could keep it on this jar, but like uh, just keep running it go as uh, we go. Okay. Um, if that by one sec. Like keeping I'm sorry? the suction suctioning. Oh, no, I turned it I turned it off for a sec just so we could look. No, I mean, that's what you're suggesting. Yeah, I'm just yes. suggesting, like, keeping it going. Um, if that won't contaminate it, I don't know. I don't know. I think we can run it, like, for a bunch more time. Like, I don't know, uh, like 50 or 60%. Uh -huh. Or do you have interest in getting the bigger one with the, with the manipulator? Um, sorry, I, the lounge was, was calling up. Um, repeat that, Kylie. Um, I said, do you have interest in if uh, like shoring up your bets and getting like the larger one with the actual manipulator? So that way you can see that you have your sample, you know? Um, let me check in with our shoreside scientist. One, one moment. Roger. Where is it? Why'd they take it off? Oh, just Raj in the kerfuffle. Yeah, right? Like, get under there and, yeah. I mean, give it a, if they're interested, we could try. It might be great for us getting the base of it. What's that? Okay. Okay. 
So our, our shoreside scientist is interested in us attempting this bigger one. Raj, I'm gonna turn porch light back. Oh, you got it. Oh, we're on the same page. <laughs> Let's have them all be the same. <laughs> yeah. Where would we put it? Um, we have a, one of the starboard bio boxes. Starboard that would A. Be great. <laughs> Excellent <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> or I don't know what's easiest for you guys with the arm right now. Star starboard's better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could. <laughs> you can be facetious. So I want to use the arm a bit more before I feel like I don't know if I'll really trust it to like go in front of the camera right now mm -hmm. um so it's really nice to just put it in the starboard um i don't know how floaty it's going to be i mean if this were ideal circumstances we'd definitely go for the front box for it but here we are all right well the starboard bio boxes are all open but we can go with a okay for now um really quickly i think oh sorry go ahead should we turn <laughs> suction back on Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Just like, but not, I wouldn't go at full. No, just Because, like um, so the thing with suction. 30 percent Is that, yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to change the camera to be starboard bio. Yeah. Um, so let's put it on an inner small box if we can. If I struggle to do that just because of like the way the sample goes, I'll put it on an, on A. A, A is an inner small box. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. That, which I think is a perfect plan because then if we do open it again, we can just open it part way. Yep. Awesome. Same thoughts. <laughs> Same page. Yeah. Will you, um, I don't know, maybe we should turn suction off until after we put it. Otherwise, you just have one camera for the starboard bio box. Um, we don't have, you, we don't you, have to watch it. I think we can just have it. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. that's fine. In that case, uh, yeah, it's just on thirty percent. Like it's on a nice low percentage, so it shouldn't starve the arm. Okay. Okay. Okay, this will be exciting. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. Hopefully, the base is not calcified. I would have a low hope that it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I would guess that it is. Um, if those baby ones were. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, so um, how this is... Uh, okay, so... This is kind of going to squoosh it. Um, I'm going to lower my grip force by basically to three, so it will barely close on it. And then I'm going to... I'm thinking about using... I'm talking on SPL, so... She can hear me. I'm yep. thinking about using the coral cutter side to scrape against the rock. Okay. Yeah, that sounds um, good. And I may cut the base, so it's not maybe not a neat sort of like letting go of the anemone. Yep. So that's my plan. That's that's fine. And if you hear from her that she would like something different while I'm working, just let me know. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing. <laughs> hey Nav, heads up, this is all gonna be that same sample. Ready for the valve. Roger. Thank you.
Yeah, we got enough captures. Okay, great. We also have a bunch from before when we first tried to yep. get it. Can you center it up so we can zoom? You're very close. Thanks, Tam. Let's get a Zoom video. Yes. This is only number three. I know. <laughs> Turned on grip force. Let's try five. See if it'll close on five. Okay, we can reset up. That was very interesting thing to have happen. Okay, let's get a zoom video. Let's just try a video. You're welcome to zoom out if that's what it takes to keep it in frame.
Go a little wide. Um, <laughs> I'm coming up just a little short. Let's get that zoom again video. Oh, wow. No, I'm just, <laughs> just crushing it. Um, so what about if we tried to slurp, slurp it left, now? Yeah. yeah, and we could put it in the same jar. Okay. Um, do you? Yeah, it's not going to be something I yeah, can put in a box. No, that that doesn't look. I'm sorry, easy. guys. There are some bits we can slurp yeah, up, though. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Thank you for trying. Yep. Did sorry you that that didn't go super well. It's okay. That looked very very difficult. Um, do you think that? Slurping in the same jar or a different one, what what would make more sense given our slurp situation? Same uh, same jar is fine, okay. um, and that will allow us to keep, keep running suctioning. suction, yeah. for, and we'll be able to see whether things are really going through. Perfect. And while we're doing it, I'll run the hose in and out. Okay, great. Yep. Even a little piece would be really useful for oh, a yeah. saco. So we can definitely get that. Okay. Excellent. We can make that happen. Yeah, I feel kind of crummy. I've definitely had that experience with an Eminis before. They don't really want to come up. Yeah. And yeah, and, and Asako, our, our shoreside scientist, thinks that the base is really calcified, so it's probably pretty hard to, to remove. Yeah. Can you give me a zoom? <laughs> Stuck on something here. Thank you for tuning in, Edward. The pilot, the ROV pilots, do you control the arms of the ROV? And currently, the scoop is unavailable. Okay, suction's gonna come back on. Um, and What's on your mind? Camera? Uh, and yep. it's, it, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah, we do have the 30% going now. Nice, great. Oh, there, there I see it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Yay. Yeah, I think and I see one or two of the little it. ones too. Oh, maybe. that's great. I... 
thank you, an enemy. We're going to learn a lot from you. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your sacrifice. Yeah, and I'm sorry thanks. I had to be this way. That's great. I uh, think sh do you want the rest of this? I if it's too difficult, don't don't worry about it. I, we have yeah. enough. I think you have enough. Okay. Yeah, because we give it one more scrape to see if it'll come up, and then we'll just work on getting the next thing done. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Thank you. And we've got everything in there, so we don't even need to work the hose in and out. Perfect. Awesome. Is that what you think, Kylie? Yes. Cool. I concur. I conquer. Okay. <laughs> um, All right. Excellent work. Thank you for that. No problem. Okay, hit the valve. Valve's coming off. Valve's off. Okay. We're ready for the next thing. Great. Thank all you right. all for your patience. Thank, Thank you. you. You did it. Great. Hi, Alex, this is table two. How do you feel about me messing with engineers some more? Sonar can stay up, but also happy to hold off. Um, I'm okay if you're okay. I'm okay. Okay, yeah, you can do whatever you need to with engineer. Okay, so I think we're ready to continue moving towards our waypoint All when right. everybody is in good shape. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds good. Just one moment. Oh, yeah, sure, if you'd like. Okay. Okay, no problem. Thank you all for tuning in to Nautilus Live. We are currently exploring Kingman Reef, the more shallower depths, looking for uh, deep sea corals and sponges, as well as volcanic rocks. Please send us your questions. We'd love to hear from you. Shall we uh, continue forward? Yeah. Um, science, you ready to get going? Yeah, let's get going. Pretty let's keep moving. Are we, we're full wide on Zeus, that looks good. Could we step two zero meters bearing 162? So we're not quite into this canyon yet, but we will be pretty soon. 162? Okay. Yeah. So we're also just going to want to keep our eyes peeled for any rocks that are not attached, um, especially if we have the arm working again. But um, okay. I didn't see anything. Okay, so sounds good. At the good. moment, so we can just keep moving, but we'll keep our eyes open. Hello, Ohio. We'll be diving until 12 midnight.
you know, everybody, our uh, listener is still patiently waiting about that studies question. They just brought it up again. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, what's the studies question? I believe it was a ROV, what should you study to mm -hmm. end up as an ROV person? Yep. And we have, we have praise coming to our pilots from our shoreside scientist, Asako. She says, wonderful, great job, appreciate. Asako, I'm very sorry about that, that anemone. It really looked like it would come with us. I think she's really happy about okay. it with what I'm we glad have, to hear so, that. so yeah, great job. It's a cool little outcrop. Mm -hmm. but, but great question about the studies, if you guys want to chime in with that when you feel you have a moment. Yeah, the question was, what kind of college studies would one take to be an ROV pilot, and how long would it take to become an official pilot? Um, I took, I have my associates in uh, general engineering. So I have like my maths and my physics done and I have some various, um, I have a bunch of different kinds of electives, uh, engineering electives, but they're, they are not for a singular engineering discipline. Um, and then I, but at any and all experience is relevant. Um, Academics will give you the theory, but I think even more valuable for actually getting the job and doing the job at sea is uh, the technical experience. So like soldering and crimping and understanding how to turn a wrench and strap stuff to a deck, um, those kinds of things um, are just as important as understanding the theory. Um, and there's no one concrete path to getting here, all uh, experience is relevant and uh, informs your perspective and is important and um, Let's get a zoom Can we video? zoom? Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Megan, Gabby with the mind reading my mind. Completely <laughs> in sync here. All right, I, think this is a, I think this is actually another Paracalyptra 4. We've seen quite a few of these. Nice. Oh, great. Great view on the base. Oh, yeah, you want? Okay, there we go. We can That's do that. Nice. We can accommodate that. I keep looking at these rocks also wondering mm -hmm. if they're not attached, but they all look very okay. attached. Go ahead. So. Thank you, Kylie. Yeah. Check out the bio pages. Everybody has a different path to getting here. Um, and you can find like a specific like ROV program if you'd like, but um, if you don't have one accessible to you nearby, um, there are very many other ways to go about it. Um, if this is what you want and you just pursue uh, different opportunities to get out to sea, um, as in like internships or work, um, or, or even like building them um, for uh, commercial for places on shore, um, and then like testing them in the field, things like that, like there's, there's many, many, many ways. Uh, but if you're interested, just pursue it and you will get there. Go ahead. Yeah, I would say don't take no for an answer if you're hearing no a lot. A lot of us worked really hard to get here and pushed through a lot of no's. Um, and you can get there through that through those. Good advice. Go for Zoom. Lovely black corals. Okay, go ahead. Are we Shall holding we? station? Yeah, I was just letting the step sort of run out. Um, okay. But we can continue along if there's nothing else to, to look into here. Science? Yeah, let's keep moving. Okay. Raj? I'm game. Bridge now. Could we step two zero meters bearing one six two? Oh, what's that? Little ball shaped thing? Yeah, I the just saw that too. The spiky one? Yeah. 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 Go for zoom. Looks like an urchin maybe. Yeah, I think it's an urchin. Yeah. I like these 
Little, little balls with big spikes. <laughs> yeah, I know, they're super cool. <laughs> a very large personal bubble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I can totally relate. <laughs> it's like the little tiny dogs who are super ferocious. Yeah. <laughs> okay, go wide. Steve says it is a deep sea long spine urchin. Oh, cool. That, that sounds. Sense. That's a really classic sounding name. Like that was the first urchin that anyone found with the ridiculously with long spines. Sp <laughs> <Yeah>. spines. <laughs> Oh boy, that is an overhang Ooh, right there. Yeah. Nice plexorid, some black coral. Gorgeous. Free and floating. That crinoid crinoid. was like, I am bailing on this. <laughs> <laughs> I want nothing to do with this business. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that stock over to the left? Is it's that a, a stalk and a shadow. Ah. And we'll go look at it. The story of the stalk and her shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Black coral. Oh. I think, right? It looks like it's got a black skeleton. Can we can zoom? zoom? Yeah, we definitely can. I'm just getting it centered up. Okay, go for zoom. Yeah, that might be. That looks almost like that that sponge that we saw earlier, but smaller. It's, I don't think it's a sponge. It I has don't polyps think so on either. It, yeah. So oh, like, I can right? see it. Yeah. yeah Are you little tiny polyps. Black coral. Yeah, I think so. Wow, nice shot. Yeah, we can go in for a polyp zoom after this like little pirouette thing. <laughs> yeah, kind of like. If it Kylie, we have a question for you. Yes, dear. Um, someone says, uh, this is Sandy. She says she watched you hug Argus when it was recovered after the attachment. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I love she that. She said it was such a sweet moment. And what has been done to keep a, de a detachment from happening again? Um, hi, Sandy. I feel like we experienced that together. That was crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, go wide. Did you guys get what you needed on that? Yes, I got some okay. there awesome captures. Um, we have since re-terminated, um, it's called, it's a PMI style termination on Argus, um, and we have different tension limits now, um, and kind of different operating conditions that we're trying just to observe to prevent that from happening. Um, but it kind of a little bit seems like it was a fluke because we had the same termination style for 16 years. Um, and other groups have had it too. Yeah. Mm. I think and D2 uses it. Right. So um, I'm not ex exactly sure on the postmortem, like what the smoking gun ended up being that caused that. Uh, but we can just be a little bit more um, uh, conservative about um, the the conditions that we operate in. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm glad, uh, it's so nice that she remembered that. I blacked <laughs> a lot of it out, uh, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are those some C pins over to the right? Could be, we can maybe. Know or am I seeing shadows again? <laughs> I see little it's, sticks. Yeah, I see them. It's often yeah. hard to tell though. Ooh, and several C stars down at the bottom. Brittle stars, maybe? Go for zoom. Oh, yeah, cutest nice little, little ones. Pen. Nice. Got what you need there? Uh, one more. Yes. Okay. A little wider. We can check out the next one. 
I think it's the same. Probably. Go for zoom. Yep. Okay, go away. Mav, can we zoom out a little bit on high pack just so we can see waypoint two in the in the, on the screen? Yeah, it is a ways from us still. Gotcha. Yeah, now I'm seeing it. Okay. Into the land of sediment we go. Ooh, maybe another C pen to the left. I see what you're talking about. Maybe, yeah. Okay, uh, go for zoom. It looks like another one of the same things. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay, maybe, go yep. on. Now, what is over to the top left? Uh, Horizontal. Take a look at it. I think we can probably put another move on when this one's done. Roger. Just keep us crawling up the slope. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this a fish? It looks or is like this a not fish. fish. Okay. It's a little fishy. Oh, oh, <laughs> hello. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is a cute one. It's so cute. We haven't encountered any non-cute fishes. They're all pretty great. <laughs> I loved the batfish. Yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> that was cute pretty great. fish. That was so cute. Did we decide we pretty were at the wrong there. depth or the wrong latitude for Chana Cops? Uh, that, on that last dive? Yeah. That was the wrong depth, I think. But Yeah, I think Steve said that we should be able to see them at these depths. OK, I think we got what we need here. Go wide. And Halosaur. Pilots, this is table two. You have winch data back now. Use that map how you like it. You Beautiful. Are that our was hero. Amazing. That was a heroic effort <laughs> <laughs> of like the last like two hours. You're <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Holothurian. <laughs> Can we get a zoom on that? Or an enemy? It. Oh. Probably need to see the front of it, don't we? Or the, the opening, I guess. That looks like an anemone. That's, is that a relicanthus? Uh, Hold on. Oh, sure. doesn't really want to show its face. <laughs> Full camera shy. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just like got his hair down. Mm -hmm. Beautiful creature though. Really, mm -hmm. yeah. Hair down is a really good descriptor. <laughs> uh, can we get any more of a zoom on its mouth? Oh uh, yeah, go a little wider. Or I mean a little in further, <laughs> sorry. Uh -huh. I'm, like very focused right now. <laughs> so to speak. It's definitely got like more tentacles around its mouth. A uh, listener says it's a tube anemone. A tube anemone. You got what you need, science? Yes. Okay, go wide. Very pretty. 
Welcome, Arizona. Ooh. They would like to know, have you come across corals that were thought to be extinct or something that surprised you? Lots of things surprise us. <laughs> I don't know if we know enough about the deep sea corals mm. to be completely surprised. I mean, they're all surprising, mm -hmm. um, but not because we thought they were extinct. I think more because they're new. Uh, science, uh, remember how there was a question about uh, getting a Niskin? Do you still want or need one at some depth? Um, basically, if we see another area of a lot of biology, we, okay. can, we can do one above that, but not right here. Gotcha. I feel okay about getting a Niskin. Yeah, but this is when we had Oh yeah, just yeah, yeah. the left hand, and I said we are not getting one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I figured that. It's like trying to, um, like what is it like? It's trying to touch your, your elbow, elbow with yeah. your, <laughs> trying to touch your elbow with your your pointer finger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Touch your elbow with your pointer finger? No, no the other like one. You're on the same <laughs> arm. Like same I arm. Can, I can do it. You're talented. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing over there? You should be down getting samples. There's more sea pens down oh, yeah. here. I'm going to look at this one on the right. That one looks more <laughs> familiar. Ooh, and another either an enemy or a holothurian. No, two of them. We've got some rocks coming up. We oh, sure do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Back into the land of rocks. Nice. Oh, same, like same. Probably same as before. Okay, go wide. We'll go take a look at those spiky things over here. Oh, yeah. Look at this little uh, one's in a little sand pockmark. <laughs> There's three of them Got over you, here. <laughs> They're all almost in a line <laughs> from left was... to right. Okay, go for zoom. What is with this, like, carved out section, hey? Yeah, that's what I was just looking oh, at. Oh, so I'm sorry. <laughs> We were just talking with the data engineer. <laughs> um, same, same an enemy, mm -hmm. but like yeah. whole like carved out section. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We're at a pretty interesting. We we're coming up, sort of a ridge in between two canyons. So I wonder if there's some kind of like flow situation going on, or yeah, since there's three all in a row right here, or, and then here's another little guy up further. Um, we have two ways we could approach this waypoint. We could come and continue cresting this ridge, or we could come and hug just against the wall. Are there um, My feeling is we should be on the ridge. I think we'll have like the most interesting stuff to look at. Roger that. That's my guess. Science, what do you think? Yeah, that's exactly what we want to do, if that's good for you guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll yeah. stay. I'll we'll track a, a heading that kind of brings us, or a bearing that brings yeah, us up. just that. do your best. We'll... Or get something close. Roger. Could we zoom on that anemone that's right under yeah, us? Yeah, I think real that quick? was just the same thing that we were sampling before. Yeah, we're we're knots? counting them. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> so, so, can you tell me what's like? These are special because they're like sort of almost an anemone, almost coral. Go for zoom. That's what it sounds like. And then they have a skeleton. Like it's slightly surprising to be seeing this many. Is how it's seeming in the chat. Okay. We've got 14 of that. them now. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, go It's on. waving at us. <laughs> Why is it surprising to see this this many? Uh, I guess they just don't occur in this abundance as often. Not quite sure. <laughs> Asako, that would be my guess. do you have anything you want to share with us in the chat? And we can share it with the world about why we're so interested in these, in these ones. Since Could we... Go look at those corals. Ooh, there. look at all those corals. And then and there's also something purple. Oh, Is that a star? A slime star, probably. Yeah. It yeah. might be. It looks like a slime star. And we might have found number 15 of our. Uh, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I think uh, so. Can you name it again? Coralithus? Coralith Coralomorph. Coralomorph. Go for zoom. Coralomorph. We'll get the slime star in there first. Big slime Ooh. energy. Yeah, nice. Good. That's I like a it. cutie. Coralomorph. Okay, go wide. I need a mnemonic device for that. Corral. I know, I'm struggling <laughs> to keep it in my brain too. It keeps I'm slipping out. Like horse corral. Whip cor or there's horse? lots of things horse over corral? here. Like a corral of horses. Oh, OK. More. I just think of like a corral. corral. Oh my goodness, this, this rock, is a formation rock formation is amazing. Yeah. I do not wow. think this is volcanic. <laughs> oh, no? Interesting. Just looking at the arch that's on top, 
<laughs> wow. Hmm. What do you think it is, Amber? You can go just like half zoom now, and I'll try and capture some of the rock features. Uh, I'm just going to go with a, you know, ah, goodness, a calcite, a calcium carbonate, I mean. I don't know. I so really dark. don't know. That's it's just beautiful. That is all of those right there. The weathering feature of that is just kind of yeah. it's magnificent. Very unusual. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. With so these. many holes. Mm -hmm. This is like definitely my favorite stuff to fly around. These like very like dramatic rock features that you just like go up and over and around and through. Okay, you can go like, you know, as wide as normal. And push past the stuff, yeah. These Great. these still look possibly volcanic to me, just especially looking in in the Argus view. Those kind of look like flows. But just it is with some very interesting weathering. Yeah, just with a lot of weathering and um it's it is hard to tell though uh, because let's let this one it's covered here. in the let's crust. Let this one ride for a sec. Uh, so back to what so makes these So I don't have to rush up this like super awesome cliff interesting. face. Interesting, it's that they haven't been seen this many at the in the same There's area, there. and then also they Are haven't collected any dead center during where the previous are Nautilus and go for zoom or on a different okay vessel. No, okay, I'm wrong. It's sediment. Okay, ignore. Okay. <laughs> Could Undo. this uh, my technician could eyes. this have been like a more aerated <laughs> no cooling process to get that that texture? I think I think if this is volcanic, then it, it's probably a lot of weathering. You see, that just a lot of see weathering. Yeah. Now? Oh what? no, is, I was is looking that a at the sponge. Oh, yeah, it looks like a glass sponge. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. You were giving you were giving that sponge an overhang look. <laughs> <laughs> like concern. And then there was something. There's another different Maybe, type of sponge um, that was over to the right as well. Oh yeah. wow. What there's lots that? of what stuff just that? right here. Cool. What oh are yeah. You? Do we have a hollow thurian just kind of chilling in Go the water zoom. column? And then that guy's cool. Wow. Well, I'll get up. Yeah. That's pr keep this wow. in there, and Ooh. I will. Uh, oh, keep it here. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Whoa. What? <laughs> Got an aridogorgy and then an and then and a Venus flytrap. That's what I, I was gonna so. say. <laughs> I didn't know they. I actually think there might be a like a Venus flytrap something or other an there enemy is. or like yeah or okay. jelly or something. There is yeah. There um, are carnivorous sponges too. Is it this one? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh huh. I have no clue what this is. Wow. Ooh, pretty. Okay. Um, you can push in a little more. Hmm. See, like eating the coral? Is that maybe an enemy on the coral? It looks like it's been I attached think so. to an old Oh, that must be so. what it is. It's yeah. just facing away from us. Yeah. Okay, go wide. And can I have uh, wide on Argus when you're ready? Yeah. Can we look over to the right a little bit? It's out of view now, just slightly, but there okay. was another sponge. Yeah, there he is down at the bottom right. Oh, yeah, I see. On a stalk, I think. Yes. That's sort of like tulip-shaped sponge that we were looking at just when we got on watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a nice whip. Yeah. Oh, what wow. Is this? Can we take a whip, look at that whip after? Okay, great. <laughs> They're my favorite. I love like floating up them and getting the whole length of them. Nice. Go for zoom. Ooh, he has an associate or two. Oh, I think that associate's about to make partner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Did I see that on SPL too? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got some nice captures. Okay, go wide. We'll go find the whip. Oh my gosh, this rock is so cool. Oh. There's a bit of current here, it looks like. Yeah. There sure is. Mm -hmm.
Might be a bamboo. Okay, video, go for zoom. We'll start at the base. That's good right there. Oh yeah, that's a bamboo. I love how these like seem to go on forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, are we still doing this? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Looks like a big one. Yeah. There we go. Wow. Oh. Oh. The peak. <laughs> okay, video, you can go wide. That's beautiful. How long do we think that is? One meter, one and a half meters? Oh, oh gosh. Probably like even bigger, I don't know. Here's your 10 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely more than 10 of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looks like- Two meters? Wow. It looks like it could be even two and a half, okay. especially if you measured yeah. from, the, from yeah. the base and then kind of around the corner. We've got a good setup right now, so I'll just keep, I mean, we can keep the ship still for the rest of the watch and just sort of slowly creep up, I think. Yeah, Roger. Um, if that's okay. Yeah, that there great. seems to be a lot here. We are adjusting heading a bit. Just okay, FYI. sounds good. What will it be? Wait, no, just the ship, yeah. not me. Yeah, Raj, never mind. What is our bearing? Uh, we've been calling in 162. Go for um, Zoom. So Sounds yeah, good. That's the Looking answer. at the sticky outie bet. <laughs> you don't need more information. No. <laughs> <laughs> is there more? I was going to give what, what the plan was, and then Say I was less. like, we're done. <laughs> 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 we don't need that. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Cute. Is that a little anemone there? It's a yeah. Like, sorry. Bunch of stuff. And then is that a cup coral or a tube anemone oh, yeah, right yeah, next yeah, to yeah, it? I, I think it's yeah, a cup totally. coral. Yeah, cup coral. Yeah. Just before we started watch, okay, go on. Kylie and I were talking about what would be the the dream things we would see on this watch, and I think we've pretty much done it. These oh, big, really? yeah. steep cliffs yeah. with lots of cool bio. I never want to rush through these areas, but we always end up doing it because, like, we get there not expecting them, and then we're like going full speed ahead. This is like uh, such a luxury to be able to just float around on them. Oh, there's a big black coral down here. Go for zoom. Okay, go wide. Can we take a quick look at the corals to the right there? Uh, yeah. They might be the same thing, but... Next one of them. Yeah. 
You mean you think they might be the same as each other? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Dan's trick for getting good polyp zooms yeah. is he sets down, like, he likes to talk about it as just hitting a handrail or, like, the wall on the ship as you're walking. Mm -hmm. So you're not setting down and you don't, like, think about, okay, I've got to set down and then I'm going to have to pick up. You just nudge the bottom a little bit so it's good for, like, rocky stuff like this. And then you drive down lightly, but you don't put auto head on. Okay. And you use your porch to pivot and get things centered because heading's a lot smoother um, than moving your pan and tilt. Okay. So you center up with, uh, with heading. He also likes to get that thing that he's gonna zoom at centered up in a uh, bubble when it's on the porch. Okay. And that gives you like the perfect sort of angle on it. Okay. Um, so he really likes to uh, like just touch down real quick. And you don't have to have a great landing. And then you've got this like, so see how I can change heading like this? Yeah. And you don't have to do it for long and it doesn't have to be super stable. In fact, it's really nice if it's a little bit dynamic. Yeah. Go for zoom. And then like if you're all the way zoomed in on something, you can sort of pan across it a little bit. It looks more like this paraclip before we've been seeing. That base is really neat. And then sometimes if you are really stable and sitting there a while and everyone's really excited about the thing, mm -hmm. maybe you like look around a little bit or something. But that takes not like just a little bit of practice and then it's like sup super powerful. It's only, it's really only good for like rocky substrates, but okay. it's awesome for them. All right, awesome. Uh, you can push in if, that, if you have any more. Because sometimes just like being totally parked statically, it's like a little boring. Like yeah. It's nice to like move through the, through the creature. It's awesome. Okay, Thank you. go wide. So that's the Dan trick. Roger. It's a good one. It's great. Oh, look at that on the left. That's what that's what Mary had said. That the two that are probably the same. Oh yeah yeah. Um, anything else? We've got four minutes left. Um, I think maybe the Plexor, the yeah. yellow guy? Yeah, sure. Everywhere I look, there's like more. Yeah. 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 Use up all the pennies in our Zoom bank. Before I mean, we might leave. as well. We have there eight minutes. Are, the Zoom bank is, it's, it's is full. infinity full. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> we're not moving. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we hit the jackpot. Nice. Little shrimp. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for Zoom. That's really cute. Yeah. They're so totally waving yellow. at us. Yeah, the color is so vibrant. I love the contrast. Yeah, it's really nice. I don't want to leave this one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, go wide. What's the next one? That tall guy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and like off to the right, just a little bit. Someone's asking if that's the same. The sponge. Yeah, I think we've looked. Is it a black coral? The black coral. The black coral. Parentopathies, if I'm saying that correctly. Boy, there's some really big corals just spread out here. Yeah. Go for zoom. What a cool shot. Yeah, those shots always look like we're like on the surface of the moon or something. Yes, <laughs> otherworldly, really. Yeah. Really otherworldly. Just stay right there. Let me see if I can pick up and still look at this. This is the parantopathies, is that right? I think so. That's like it's like one of the scientists in the chat yeah. saying that. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, go wide. You guys liked the just the surface of the moon shot here? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. we can just make a meal out of that. <laughs> it's good ingredients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Oh, Ooh, it really looks that way in the 4K camera. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's a really yeah. neat 4K shot. You can see in Bubble, too, there's like a, I don't know, erosion spot. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah cool I'll go look at that prow with HD as well, because it's just very neat. Am I doing anything particularly dumb 
Not, not yet, <laughs> <Okay>. no. <laughs> I'll give you a heads up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I can tell when I'm like getting a little bit too into the, no, into the weeds. This is awesome. <laughs> This is a and great like, way to enter watch. This yeah. is exactly when I'm going to do something silly. This is perfect. Uh, Kylie, can I get uh, 4K up again down here? Yeah. Um, and then everybody should just look at Argus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's like exploring an alien planet. Can you come up a little bit more just to see like more of an overview? Yeah. Do you want me to zoom out? Uh, oh yeah. I didn't realize you were in. Yeah, because it's it's I'm pretty far away. So. Oh, really that's perfect then. Yeah. That's here, and I can spin a little bit to get to light it up. Nice. Again, just a glorified flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a great flashlight. It's a really good flashlight. It's like tens of thousands of lumens worth of flashlight. <laughs> really great camera work, Ryan. You've been very smooth with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been awesome. I'm not flying for Herc video right now, um, so that's going to look a little bit seasick-ish. <laughs> I'm just trying to light up cool features in Argus. And it's working. Yeah. There's so <laughs> many to look at. And then um, we drop off into the abyss. Anywhere else you all want to look? Oh, there's something that just scooted across there. Oh, I think that shrimp. was a shrimp. A little shrimp. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm back to looking at her HD again. Okay. Oh, I think people are entering the van right now. Okay. So Excellent. We can maybe just sort of hold off on that for now. Okay. A Raj. This has been excellent. Yeah. This is definitely a good little. Yeah. It's a cool outcome. And cool. Hi. Hello. I'm gonna, um, I think, take, put the heading back to 162. 162? Okay. And that way they're kind of set up. 162, Sounds although, uh, I think we're probably gonna change to, to come up this ridge to 175 or so. That'll be up to that's Samantha, what I'll keep. but that's what I was gonna pass on. I'll keep 175. Okay. Thank you. Hey friends.
Are you there, Steve? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Ready for high speed action whenever you want. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to go up slope. Yeah, so Steve, it sounded like um, the previous team was interested in heading up this ridge here. Is that still what you're hoping for? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, we're going we're gonna to just kind of follow the contours of, uh, on uh, on camera too, so we're going to try and follow you know, the the ridges, not necessarily the top of the ridge, but we might actually be want to be just down below it. Okay. Kind of. Just the crest. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Great. Okay. And they were doing 20 meter steps um, and letting things kind of settle out just because it's so steep. Yep. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Sound good, Dan. Sounds good to me. Alrighty. Bridge nav. So I think Steve wants to make up some time so you can. Crank it up to light speed. <laughs> Ludicrous speed. Uh, can we do two zero meters bearing 175? So we've been doing 0 0.2 knots. Uh, start there and then we can see if we want to speed up. Sure. Yep. One of the main things to make up time is just to keep the boat moving, not to stop. Okay. I'll give her a long move and just well, we're, st we're still going to take a look at things as we as we can. Uh, I have a pretty good idea of what we've looked at so far and what we haven't seen, so I'll give you a shout, but uh, I think we can put that move in whenever you're ready. Yep, I'm ready. Okay, moves in, and uh, ship is underway. So I'm going to stay out uh, towards the end of my leash there. I'm going to have a pretty steep here so you can have a par delta if you want. And right now you have 65 meters of altitude. Yep. Okay, I'll come down. That'll give us more time to look at stuff. if we get close then you'll have to come up right right the train yep we'll see how the tether behaves it might be able to get some tight shots be nice to get tight shots on the cliff here yeah um, are you okay if i ask tammy to zoom in or do you want to keep it wide for because tammy's not ready yet. right now sorry zoom in about halfway maybe tammy's not ready yet okay Eight years away, so if you zoom in now, it's just going to bounce out of the picture. About there? Yeah, that sounds that's good. good. Give you some more light. Too much. Twenty meter move, and Argus hasn't moved. I know. I think we'll do bigger, bigger steps. <laughs> I'll put in another one if, uh, or you want to wait to see. Like what are swings like? 100 meter moves are fine with me. You can always change the bearing. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to K2, he says, uh, bridge nav, maintain, what's he saying? Maintain speed and heading, change bearing to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She does do the cancel re punch in, but um, yeah. in effect, the boat keeps trucking and it just changes its bearing. Roger. Bridge, Nev. We're going to add one zero zero meters on the same bearing. Well, I can't go forward. I'll go sideways. Interesting. Uh, is this all erosion? That's a good question. We're, you know, we. I think we. Were, it was pretty obvious we had landed uh, a bit earlier in the dive, 
in some what looked like um, pillow lava formations. But up here, I think it's uh, too early to tell or too difficult to tell without um, looking at samples of the rock. I think you know there's also a bunch of stuff that's probably fallen down from above or climbing a pretty steep slope. And at the head of this canyon, it's about a 60 degree average uh, incline. So it's not unlikely that we're going to have stuff fall down from above. But I'm not sure what, what this is. I think there were some competing hypotheses from our uh, previous watch. Slide to the left there. It looks a little more interesting. It's still waiting for Argus. Some of the textures look like some of the ferromanganese crust samples that Coralie has, um, but obviously this is just very heavily sedimented as well. Um, yep. So it does make it more difficult to tell. Yeah, we um, we have, or we will keep an eye out for any rocks uh, as we kind of go through the next several hundred meters of depth on our dive, but kind of being very deliberate when it comes to sampling uh, only because we want to make sure that we can sample more things if we need to, um, using the capacity yeah, that we have built in. Sorry, I should have said something. I was looking in Argus. Mm. So, if you look in Argus there, we're lighting up the cliff. So that's the, uh, while we're waiting for the, yep. the yep. uppers. So there, oh, come on. All right, well, hello. I want to introduce anyway. our watch really quickly. We've got Delta Dan and the Arachnophote Band signing in again. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to be here. Hello, world. Giving you an update if you're just joining us on what our current plan is. This dive is going to be exploring shallower depths of the western edge of Kingwood Reef between 1,400 meters and approximately 200 meters. The site is most notably characterized by a large notch with steep walls cut into the sides of the reef from about 200 to 500 meters depth. This connects to smaller canyons that extend to deeper depths. These canyons are expected to have steep, rocky sides that may provide material for rock sampling, which is one of our objectives but also for attachment of suspension and filter feeding organisms. So we're hoping to see a lot of biological features here as well. Um, we're gonna proceed up and along the steep sides of these deeper canyons toward the shallow. One of the priorities for this dive is to collect samples that are iron manganese rich crust at sites that are shallower than a thousand meters. Um, as their chemistry at this depth is not well understood. So there you have it. Um, compared to our last watch, we're shallower, but again, we'll be looking at geological and biological okay, features. Uh, um, hoping to do some sampling as needed. So thanks for joining us as we explore. Uh, I'm Dejana Figueroa, Science Communication Fellow from Los Angeles, California. Um, I also teach at a local high school in Los Angeles, and I'm happy to be here to share with you uh, some of the adventure, and I'm going to introduce some of the team. We'll hey, start. Uh, Steve, can yep. we change bearing a little to stay over here on the uh, yeah. cool uh, stuff? Yeah, yeah, that uh, sounds good to me. Steve, can we start off with you? To make yep. Go that way. You yeah, this, so this thing, so. hi everyone. Um, my name is Steve Oscovich. I'm the watch lead for the 4 to 8, and I'm also the science lead for this particular expedition to the Line Islands in Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. Uh, I am a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University. And I study uh, kind of the ecology of seamount environments, but also I specialize in deep water corals uh, and the bit about their biogeography and biodiversity in the tropics. Right click, so I think it is. That's me, uh, but I'm joined by also several scientists ashore. We have uh, a number of scientists ashore from uh, all over the world joining us, helping us provide feedback on their areas of expertise relating to things like deep water corals and sponges and uh, we appreciate their input, so I'll recognize them as we move through the watch today. Thanks, Steve. 
We also have a geologist in the data logger position on the end there. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Lippett. Um, I'm sitting in the data logger seat for the four to eight watch. I am a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island and I'm studying marine geology. So if you have any questions, just let Dejana know. Uh, I guess I can introduce myself next. My name is Jordan Akiyama. I am a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. The Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument, which we're currently in, is uh, overseen by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as we help manage and preserve the pristine reefs and the sea life that are in this within this area. So there you have it, cool power team back on the science room. And if available and willing, I'd love for the first row to introduce themselves as well. Sure, Samantha Wishnack, uh, navigator, and also the Ocean, Explo the <laughs> Ocean Exploration Trust Operations Coordinator. I think I should do that the other way around next time. Uh, <laughs> and OET is the nonprofit that owns and operates the Nautilus. I'm Dan, currently sitting in the herd chair. I'm one of the cats that Sam has to herd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Antonella, um, Argus pilot. Uh, Tammy Gomez, I am a video engineer. I like long walks and intertidal zones, poking at the, oh, just, I'm from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> We learn more zones. about you every watch. <laughs> <laughs> Long walks, intertidal zones, new to brinks. The list goes on and on. So um, we're all here. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about what we're hey, doing, what uh, we're seeing. Any chance you can the chat take a live. look at this thing here? This one right there? We just started getting moving. That's OK. <laughs> <laughs> you have plenty of time. Okay. <laughs> it's just one thing. Uh huh. Just, just keyword there. I'm only asking because it's a new species for the dive, so. Ooh, what are we looking at here, Steve? I'll let you know. I know it's new though. So this is um, this is a primnoid octocoral. Uh, so it's. A, um, oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at. A bunch of the associates actually you have a bunch of uh, these brittle stars here but there actually might be some predation by a small jelly or some sort of animal out there this is a primnoid called thurella and uh, it's known from these depths but the first i've seen at this site so it's good good to make that observation um, but it's related to some of the other corals we have around here that are also in the same family i'm, th I'm thinking these are actually small uh you know maybe snails or something they seem to be predating on a bunch of the uh, polyps uh, in this particular spot. Is that uh, why right next to them you, you see an absence of polyps? Yeah, some of them are denuded, yeah. yeah. All right, all set, thanks. Is that a little shrimp guy? Yeah, some shrimp, you'll see those in there too. There's some a lot of other things over here. We have cup corals, you know, solitary sclerotinians. We've also got yellow plexorid fans. Uh, at least a few different species, maybe maybe a couple. Yep. Um, and then we have a bunch of these endoxacrinus crinoids too. We've been seeing them since we got on bottom here. Yeah. They're pretty interesting. I, those are really cool to look at. They just they I pop. Agree. And there's so many of them, you know, in the area that we're at right now. They're like little underwater palm trees. Or trufula trees as the watch before us <laughs> describe them as. Oh, we've got a couple questions coming in um, from our viewers. Thanks for watching out there. Oh, we've got some fans. They want to know if it is possible to purchase some merch. <laughs> Nautilus gear. Yes, I got. I don't have an answer for that one. I'm not sure. 
I got a couple old ones listed on eBay if you want. There you go. <laughs> oh, great. I got lots of oil stains. <laughs> uh, not at this time, but we are hoping to in the future. Does that make it worth more or less oil stains? Yes. Way more. <laughs> Way more. I mean, I mean maybe you should sign stains? it, Delta Dan, and I mm -hmm. bet you. A signed Delta Dan oil stain cap on, <laughs> on eBay. So, um, yeah, plans for Gotta merchandise in the future, but at this point, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Going to get them before my wife puts them out in the garage. And, and then for the geologist, <coughs> what are the what led you to marine geology, and what are some of the geological goals or objectives of this particular dive? That's a good question. Um, so I never really thought that I'd find myself in marine geology, yeah, for example, um, yeah. but I tend to study volcanoes. And of course, most of the world's volcanoes are on the sea floor, right? We don't even know how many actually exist. And so fast, yeah. that kind of brought me uh, to where I am now, right? My advisor um, enticed me with that idea that there's just so much more on the sea floor that we don't really know about. Um, and yeah, for this going. dive in particular, as Dejana kind of explained, we are looking for some ferromanganese crusts um, on some of these rocks. Um, and those are important because they tend to harbor a lot of really important trace metals um, that are key in producing things like lithium state? batteries and other renewable energy sources. Um, and we are depleting our... Uh, land-based reservoirs of those metals. And so it'll be interesting to find or to know if these areas tend to have higher amounts of those iron manganese crusts or not. Cool. I can, uh, I feel you on that, like wanting to know more about the unknown, right? There's so many geological features and volcanoes out there in the ocean that we just don't even know about. Oh, yeah. It's really cool when we find ourselves here on an expedition where, you know, in some cases on our dives, we're exploring unexplored regions and, uh, you know, unnamed and unexplored seamounts. No, absolutely. Getting a better understanding of all those kind of missing links helps us just uh, better understand the evolution uh, of our planet. Change our bearing back to uh, 180, please. Missed it just about 60 seconds ago. We went by some brightly bright purple coral. I don't know if you saw that, Steve. Yeah. I, can, can you, that's my favorite color. Can you tell me a little bit about that species? Yeah, um, so this, uh, this species is probably one of the most characteristic purple species in the entire diversity of rock corals in the deep sea. Um, it's not a very common color. Uh, maybe a couple of different families have really purple coloration patterns like that. Uh, this one is uh, an octocoral, another type of sea fan, in uh, the family Victor Gorgia Day. In fact, it's the namesake for the family, which is called Victor Gorgia. And um, it was actually named after uh, the... I think the oh, French sub, uh, Vic Victor 6000. Oh, wow. So uh, they <laughs> that sub actually uh, explored Mid-Atlantic Ridge, I think, in uh, those times of parts. I don't know if it's still in operation right now. I imagine it is. Actually, is it an ROV or a sub? Anyone? I don't know how to look that up on Google real quick. They have two of them. Yeah. Uh, one's manned and one's unmanned. I, I yeah, I think it's uh, Ephraimer. As it operates it, yep. Uh, Atalanta. But anyway, yeah, that was uh, a very interesting. Um, it was actually just described within the past uh, decade or 15 years or so, uh, or it was recently re, re uh, replaced into its own family um, after redescription. It used to belong to a group called the Anthothelids. But uh, yeah, a few years, uh, I think 2008 or 2009 stick out in my mind is uh, is placed in its own family and a new genus based on specimens collected at the uh, Meteor Seamount in the Eastern Atlantic. So 
interesting little uh, species here. The in this area, there's probably maybe one or two species. Uh, there's one predominant one called Victor Gorgia alba um, that you find up Hawaii way. Yeah. You find down to uh, really in, in the Phoenix Islands area, but there are also a number of other species that are predominantly from the southern hemisphere that you find up this way too. So you don't know exactly if you're in an area of what we call biogeographic overlap, where you might have multiple species. Uh, in this area. So it's good to take a look at them when we see them. But definitely easy to identify uh, to genus in most cases. Yeah, yeah okay. they, they definitely pop. And they have a cool narrative, a story, <laughs> a story behind them, which is kind of cool. Oh, now you have a code name. It's Science Steve. Some questions are coming in specifically for Science Steve here. Um, questions about coral predation. If a predator eats an area of polyps and then leaves, can the colony grow new polyps? Or does that just become an empty patch? Uh, the answer is yes and uh, yes and no. Um, so usually left undisturbed, the coral can repopulate that bare patch. Uh, in fact, they do it all the time. But there's a lot of other animals that are uh, competing for space in the deep sea, particularly space that's high up in the currents. Um, so things like hydroids, uh, so these are uh, kind of jellyfish-like relatives and coral relatives that form and attack um, the bare patches of these skeletons. You might also end up getting things like anemones uh, that can colonize bare skeleton, and then these types of animals compete for the space against the coral. So uh, sometimes it's uh, harmonious and sometimes not so harmonious. Uh, in the case of things like zoanthids, um, zoanthids are uh, yep. uh, anemone relatives, but uh, they uh, form kind of colonial clusters that can parasitize and take over entire coral colonies. So in most cases, uh, they can regrow, but it just depends on the circumstances, who's around. And uh, if the competitor can colonize that area a little bit faster than the coral can regrow, then uh, the coral's at a disadvantage. Thanks. So the answer is yes and no, depending on the circumstances and the players. <laughs> that's that's, always, that's usually the answer when you ask a scientist. It's, just, it's never always just a straight yes or no answer. It's usually sometimes or yes, but. <laughs> yes, and well, in this case, yeah, we've seen a couple of the corals covered in those zoanthids. I've seen that like completely taken over. So um, in that case, I think the answer would be no, because those colonies are growing or taking over faster than the coral can regrow. Oh, more yep, purple. There's a couple of them. Yeah, so we find the reason why I wanted to stay on this kind of uh, ledge with overhangs is that we find that um, you know, a lot of the things really like the flows that are accelerated on the underhangs and overhangs of these uh, ledges and, and cliff faces. And oftentimes they have the highest densities uh, in areas that are hardest to reach and hardest to sample and hardest to view. Um, so just by getting this information, we get an idea of how three-dimensional um, you know, the coral habitats in these areas are. Are there any ideas about the um, the colors that we're seeing? Are there any physiological reasons, biological reasons? I've just, over the past couple of dives, I've noticed the diversity in colors, and I'm wondering if there's anything else to that story. Um, yes and no, uh, again. <laughs> um, so it may be that, uh, you know, colors in this case are advantageous or it, they're produced by some sort of uh, chemical that the corals or animal produces um, that give it this pigment uh, or something that they consume rather. Uh, in some cases, uh, the pigments might just be ancestral, you know, they, they retain 
this type of coloration pattern from maybe one of their relatives, which could be a shallow water coral, which we all know are quite colorful. Um, and then when they invaded the deep sea, uh, you know, maybe over the course of millions of years, they just retain that coloration pattern and keep expressing it. But it's a it's you know, really hypothetical at this point. We don't really have any good uh, reasons why they might have a particular color pattern. However, uh, there's been some really interesting um, work done on bioluminescence and biofluorescence in corals lately like these. So it could be that those chemicals uh, are, are useful for signaling other animals too. Um, so signaling in terms of you know attracting prey or deterring predators. Yeah. So stay tuned for the, the complete story on that one, yeah? More, more work or research to be done. Yeah, that's full. Really nice shot of Victor yeah. Roche here with a bunch of associates. You've got some small shrimp on top. You've got these brittle stars. Maybe a couple different species here. At least three, maybe. Three or four species of brittle stars. And then on the rock surface, you've also got maybe these newly settled ones. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah. Okay. And there's some, some stolen friends. Yeah, whatever you got to do. Uh, yeah, probably. The reproductive life cycle of the deep sea corals, is that well understood? Yeah, it's full wide. Uh, in these parts, no. And in general, um, it's it's the what we call the taxonomic resolution is pretty coarse. So only a few thing, few maybe a few species of animals, deep water corals, have been studied uh, intensively for their reproduction, uh, reproductive capacity, or reproductive seasonality. So uh, in this area, I don't think any species we're going to see here. Uh, we really have any idea how frequent they reproduce. But uh, generally, it's a, it's a very interesting question. Um, you know, how do things that, you know, a, a lot of shallow water corals, w we know have uh, reproduction phases that are timed with things like maybe tides or uh, lunar cycles, uh, or maybe temperatures um, over the course of the year. These are major variables that change pretty dramatically, but in the deep sea, it's fairly, uh, you know, it's, it's dark all the time. It's fairly consistent habitat uh, temperature. Um, you know, other variables, salinity and dissolved oxygen are fairly consistent through a year. So how do they, one of the biggest questions is how do they know uh, when to start producing uh, their gametes, so sperm and egg. And it's not really well known in these parts. There is some indication or some idea that you know maybe there is some seasonality down here in the form of um, food pulses. You know, in the shallow ocean, we typically have food pulses that happen at certain times of the year. Uh, it, sometimes it's called like a spring bloom. Uh, we have a uh, phytoplankton bloom and subsequent um, zooplankton blooms that uh, take. Um, they're photosynthesized, and they can, when they die, they send the, their um, bodies down to the deep sea in the form of marine snow. But uh, here, it takes a long time for that food to get down. Whoa! Nice sponge. Watch the, the camera. If you uh, if you find you're moving too fast, maybe we can tone it down to like 50 meters. Uh, but it's up to you in front row. Okay. Yeah, careful. You got the uh, still cam right up against it. Got some love coming in for rocks and geologists, says the Nautilus geologists rock the world. So well done, team geology. And then a couple of follow-up questions. So um, how are undersea volcanoes found? Do you just have to be lucky? 
or are there chemical signatures? How are we finding these underwater volcanoes? That is a good question. So actually capturing underwater eruptions um, is extremely rare. There are some instances um, where you can see them on YouTube and such. Um, those instances ha just happen to be luck, right? So most of the time when volcanoes from the seafloor erupt, there's not enough uh, power or there's too much water, you know, in the way. They're too deep to actually um, show any signs of eruption at the surface. Um, but there are instances in where we do get eruptions coming to the surface. Uh, for example, earlier this year, there was an eruption in Tonga, um, and that was a submarine volcano uh, that ended up, you know, showing some explosiveness at the surface. Um, but otherwise, we look at seafloor bathymetry, and so seamounts, they tend to be um, extinct submarine volcanoes, right? And so we can see those as we map the seafloor um, and kind of go from there, plan some expeditions around them, collect some rocks and lavas, and see what the chemistry tells us about their formation. Cool. And here on Nautilus, we have um, mapping capabilities, too, grabs, huh? yeah. that don't necessarily get highlighted on our dives. But please know that we are constantly uh, working on mapping the seafloor using multi-beam technology. And that is another form of technology that allows us to detect these areas underwater. So. What are we looking at here? So we have, just a second. No prop. I'm trying to operate the still camera too so I can get Dan some oh, good photos. Oh, got it. <laughs> I wanna know what that associate is. I can't tell what that is. Yeah, so what we have here, uh, there's a couple of neat things going on. Um, it's obviously a colony of Aridogorgia, probably Aridogorgia magnus borealis. Uh, you got a shrimp here in the lower left-hand corner, possibly Bathypalmonella, uh, which are known to inhabit these colonies. But you've also got what look like isopods in here, kind of on the colony. Uh, but those are don't those typically aren't predatory. But um, it looks like the polyps are closed in this in this vicinity where uh, some of them are actually located. A bunch of uh, maybe mycid shrimp too, in and around. But uh, these are kind of the typical cast of characters we see inhabiting these colonies. This one is particularly large, but actually I think it's this species is, act is the longest okay. documented Gorgonian in existence, something in the area of six meters uh, when it was identified um, off the coast of, I want to say Kauai, but I'm not sure. Just pull up that paper. Steve, if yeah. I um, float up slowly here, you might get a few good Yeah, I'm ready. Guesses. Here we go. Ready to go. Ready to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just playing with the still cam on manual for uh, see what I can get here cuz I got it really well dialed in. So it's supposed to be. <laughs> try and uh, so I'm going to try and come lower and then float up by it. Uh huh. Ooh, nice shot. I actually got a good one right there. Yeah, but I'm moving, so it's going to be blurry. So right now, our um, Herc pilot and our scientists are working together to capture um, really good imagery that documents this organism. Teamwork is a dream work. Yeah, great shots. I got a few really, really nice ones. Were they focused? Uh, one of them was pretty poor, but actually, yeah, they were focused. I'm using the autofocus setting, so it tends to, unless we're really moving, it tends to really do a good job. Okay. okay. I'm, uh, can, you ma can you mark down a note in the log of uh, yeah. still camera photos 560 to 564? Well done. Did you get some good shots, Steve? Yeah. yeah. There a bit. Nice. Almost like I was playing asteroids or something. Bring her all stop for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, so 
Well, that one's pretty good. That's a good one. I like that one. Oh, that one's gorgeous. That one's gonna go in the in the supplement next year. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Before we stopped on that, I was going through a series of geological questions that are coming through because there's a lot of love for geology right now. Watching. Love that. <laughs> Um, they're curious about the iron manganese, and um, do, pe do, do people currently mine for these types of things in the deep sea? Good question. Um, currently, I don't think there's any mining going on, and if there there is, it's just been from oh, a few yeah, small... Um, island nations um, that have kind of been in talks with some bigger companies to go about this. Um, while it does seem like getting these iron manganese crusts from the seafloor could be a viable way to, you know, remediate our depletion of them on land, um, there's still a lot of drawbacks as well. Um, seafloor mining can disrupt benthic ecosystems pretty easily. It puts a lot of noise pollution as well as actual pollution um, into the water columns, disturbs sediment.